I'm here. Day 2001. It had been quite a long time since I'd set foot in this world. I mostly just took it all in. There's a thousand more days in this video. So much more time for work. You hear that, villagers? More unpaid labor! I'll be honest with you all. I'm recording this part last. For you, it's the beginning. But for me, it's the end. No, I'm not gonna jump off the tower. That's not what I mean. Not yet, anyway. Before I recorded the first day of this video, I wanted to record the rest of it, to truly show myself how much has changed. Oh, a lot has changed. It's a thousand days at better, and I can't wait for you to see it all. So grab some snacks and get comfy. It's a long, notable video. And I doubt many of you have a bread dispenser nearby. Day 2002, my very first order of business was trying to remember where I used to brew potions. Legitimately, I could not remember, so I went to the nether to kill blazes to start all over. Halfway through, I remembered. Of course it was in the house, you dummy. I brewed a bunch of anti-fire potions for safety. It's a long video. I'll probably need them. I took a break from this world to wait for the 1.19 update, which overhauled the caves in the game. So now I gotta get a new mine. Here should work. Don't dig straight down unless you're me. I came prepared. I have played on these new Deep Slate caves before, just never on this world, and I do gotta say they're a great update to the game. Ah! A baby zombie in a cave! Whatever shall I do? I'm doomed! I've got perfect armor on. I can hug a creeper and only take half a heart. I'm really just down here for adventure's sake. It's not like I need diamonds. However, regardless, I stayed down in the caves until I ran out of torches. Now that I've got some of those Deep Slate blocks, I can work on building a proper mine entrance. Of course, it'll be Deep Slate themed. It's a nice block. Beats cobblestone. I layered in some different ores that I found down there. Like I said, I don't really need them. I likely won't do that much mining anyway, but hey, at least my entrance looks cool. Here's why when you dig straight down, you always want to have a fire potion. I was digging out the elevator and found some diamonds. That's gotta be a good sign. That first shaft goes all the way to bedrock, but I built a second one that goes about midway down. That's where all the action is. I think it all turned out very nice, and it fits in the storage perfectly. 2008, I was back in the caves with way more torches, just trying to light it all up. Hey, creepers, sup? I don't know what this is, or what I use it for, but I don't have it, and that makes me want it. The caves are quite massive. If anything, I should be flying around here. 2009, I found some caves that were shallow enough to give me access to my beacon powers, and this is just so much fun. I move in mine faster, jump higher, I'm essentially unkillable. I'm getting to the point where most of this cave system is already lit up. I was a little sad I didn't find more copper. Found more diamonds than copper, actually. Now, the reason is copper generally spawns in the shallow caves more frequently. However, my world's very old. I'll probably have to do a journey to get copper. Kind of annoying, but I'm also powerful. It shouldn't be too bad. I've had my fun, I'm done in the caves, and that monster farm's looking at me. I decommissioned it a while back, and I think it's time that it just goes. I really only ever used this thing to get XP and gunpowder, and now I have better ways to get both of those. So I'm tearing the whole thing down. Maybe one day I'll use these blocks for a new farm. It's funny, I built this thing at the start of 2,000 days, and now I'm tearing it down at the start of 3,000 days. I don't know what I'm gonna do about all these homeless cats, but hey, at least I'm almost done. Don't worry, I will not kill them. Yet. I care! The only reason I'm not using TNT is it would kill all these cats. And I know full well if I started this video off by killing cats, I'd lose a bunch of you. So I've gotta wait till later. Get out of the way. Come on, get out of the way! Psst. The monster farm is now just a hole filled with various monster remains and cats. They will live with the dogs. I try to imagine that they all hate each other. That helped the skyline a lot, but there's still so much to do. The monster farm had a dedicated bubble elevator in addition to my other bubble elevator. They're both very useful, but they're ugly, so they've gotta go. But now the destruction is complete. The mob farm is no more. Time to cover it with dirt and forget it ever happened. Right next door to the monster farm is my bamboo farm. It works great, but again, is ugly. So I started on a new bamboo farm from my own design. But then I realized my design is flawed and would never work in a thousand days. So this time, instead of demolishing, I'm gonna renovate. The guts will pretty much stay the same. I'm just gonna be ripping out the exterior. I'm gonna replace everything with jungle wood and by the end, hopefully it'll look like a tree? But first, I need more jungle wood. I got my start in this whole world with deforestation. It's one of my favorite things. Oh, I never replant trees after I cut them down. I want the jungle to remember me. I cut trees all day. Got way more wood than I need. It's kind of a hassle coming out here. Oh, hey guys, I forgot you were all here. Wow, that's really sad. Like a good corporation, I spent all of 2022 cutting down the jungle. Oh, guys, you really shouldn't have had that second kid. At the rate I'm cutting down the jungle, this world won't last much longer. Got back home and got the wood on there, and it's not terrible but I think it's missing something. I'm gonna try to grow some branches from the farm, see if that helps at all. I also put down some roots to make it even more realistic. I'll be the first to say the top's a little uninspired, it's just a roof of leaves, but what do you want from me? I think it's better this way, and your opinion doesn't matter. Aiden. While I'm working on my farms, might as well do something with the melon farm. It produces melons great, but by far the worst aspect of this farm is I have to physically transport the melons to the melon men. The journey ain't far, it's really just a rocket away, but that adds up. So I'm gonna build a giant melon pipeline. It's ambitious, and I'm worried. This melon pipeline's gonna go under all my ancient artifacts. It's pretty frivolous, but then again, so is everything else I build. And most of the footage is me just digging, hoping not to hit stuff. At the end of the pipe will be an item sorter, and I've never built one of these before. Luckily, nerds on Google showed me how. 
thank you. All this thing was supposed to do was separate melons and pumpkins, but I gotta be honest, I really don't understand how it works. The biggest challenge outside of building the whole system was getting it to hook up properly to where the melon men live. But by 2030, it was all done. My melons now go right where they need to be. This is gonna save me stacks of rockets in time. Spoiler alert, I trade a lot of melons in this video. One last day for inspections, I'll probably get fined for no ladder in the service entrance. But now it's all done, so I can focus on not smiting villagers. Ugh. Next project time, this one will be vegan. Time for an automatic sugarcane farm. With my automatic gunpowder farm, this will give me automatic rockets automatically. This build I did not have to consult the internet for, sometimes I'm competent. Now hundreds of times a day I will behead sugarcane, and they feel pain. Day 2034, I set up a collection system, nothing too complicated, and by the end of the day I got it hooked up to where it spits out sugarcane right by where the gunpowder is. I didn't have to use glass but I think I like it. Now it's time to make the tower bigger, oh yeah. Minecraft updated and now there's a new build height, so of course I've gotta make the tower as tall as it can be. I had enough emeralds to get it sorta of framed, but that's why I upgraded the melon man, I need money. Binks lives up here, he owns everything. One of the first things I'm gonna set up on this new emerald tower is a bubble elevator all the way to max height within the tower itself. It wasn't exactly easy putting this all in, but that's what I get for building a house made entirely of money. See, I normally get to max height with a separate bubble elevator right near the tower made of glass, and I don't like it. It felt really good to finally destroy this thing. I'd been planning on it for like two years. I'm just shy of enough emeralds to complete the elevator. This made me feel so poor. This just inspired me to renovate more of my villagers. I never liked how the stonecutter building juts out from the wall. Construction amongst villagers is tough. A few got hit, but none died. But now the room's a little bigger and completely flush with the wall. I'm happy with that. Got more money, didn't pay taxes, and finished the elevator the next day. I have all the money in the world, but not a single bone, so I had to go out day 2042 and kill skeletons. Bones were the last thing I needed for the elevator, but now it's done. I can now go from sea level to maximum height for free, and it's all hidden within the tower. That's notable. Eh, it still needs some work, but I'll get there. After building up my land, day 2044, I decided to rip up my land. I'm gonna level off my inner wall. It's gonna take some time. Gonna have to move some buildings, but I think it'll be worth it. I mostly just need to kill some time in camp to make more money, and this is what I decided to do. I had to move the five-year garden up one block and totally forgot you can't move a cake without destroying it. There goes some history. No one will notice except the millions that watch this video. The entrance to the vault won't get moved. I'm just gonna totally redo it. That'll be another day. I don't have any ideas right now. I had to work on the big totem, which will just be a block shorter from here on out. Here's the new vault design. Uses pretty much the same blocks as the old one, but with a year's more building skill. I did have to rewire some redstone in the vault, and it's an absolute mess. I don't know what I was thinking. But now everything's level and working, at least in the inner wall. The outer wall? Maybe Maybe we'll do later. I've been having some lag on the compound and I'm not sure what it is, so today I decided to deflower the base. I really doubt flowers have anything to do with lag, I just wanted to say deflower and get away with it. Day 2051, I'll be changing up the bedroom. Right above it is this furnace room that I never really use. With all that extra room, I put up some bigger windows and some moon and stars art that I really like. And day 2052, I'm making a new throne room. This one's gonna be much bigger at the top of the tower. Oh yeah, with these windows, you can see the whole sunset. And because I'm up so high, it's the dead of night but I can still see the sun. After moving my throne up there, I watched the entire sunset. But to tell you the truth, in reality, I was likely away from my computer, eating or pooping. Day 2054, I'm gonna clean up the melon men. They're all kind of smashed in there. Putting all the workstations on one wall like this seemed to work really well with the stone cutters, and it works here too. There was a thunderstorm, day 2055. I didn't think anything of it until my dragon statue got hit. I got the fire put out. It's lucky I was standing here. What are the odds? Day 2056, I had enough of the tower built that I could put a ladder all the way up. The top half still looks pretty bad, but like all cosmetic issues, it can be fixed with money. Putting in a sky bedroom, day 2057, I can guarantee you I'll almost never sleep here. It's done! If you don't believe in walls or windows, I need more money. The house is gonna take way too long if I don't set up another business venture, and that's what I'm doing today. Soon, I will fill this hole with my greatness. That's how I became a dad. It's gonna be a big sheep farm. 20 sheep in total. Had to run over to Elftown for some supplies and got a chance to see Warthog which always warms my heart. More construction, blah blah. No sheep in the farm just yet, but now all the wool will transport nicely to the surface. Then I tied up six new employees. Their cubicles are almost ready. Now I need villagers, but I killed all my orphans, so it's over to Ghost Town to grab some more. I almost killed all these orphans too. Luckily, they got in the boat before my patience ran out. And after a lot more struggle than I'd like to admit, I've got two new villagers in the orphanage. Aw, one of the melon men had a kid. Perish! I had to take out a lot more than that. Must have dropped some bread in here. Eh, at least the 
sheep breeding's going well, I've got enough to fill up the farm. Mostly sheep shoving, day 267. But now it's done. 20 sheep, all working for me. I'm obviously not just gonna leave this wool fountain out in the open, I've gotta build a housing around it. I'm gonna try my best to make it look like a big sheep and hope it doesn't burn down in a lightning storm. Yeah, I think it's okay. A little cruel if you think about all the helpless sheep underneath it. Regardless of how you think it looks, it's been producing very well. All these blocks will be an emerald. So I need more string to make looms, and in my infinite wisdom, I forgot that I can just kill spiders. Get this, my brilliant plan was to go all the way back to the end fortress. End stronghold? Whatever. And find the library. Donde esta la biblioteca? I got string. Just didn't need to make it this difficult. Oh, I forgot to mention this whole time I've been infecting people with diseases in my basement. This part isn't too interesting, but will pay off greatly. Each one of those shepherds will buy white and black wool for one emerald each. Speaking of zombies, I can hear moaning underneath my compound and gotta find them. I hate that. I'm normally pretty good about lighting up areas underneath my base. This must have happened during the renovation. Gotta finalize the innards of the sheep. It'll be a lot harder to do any of this with villagers inside. I really like this black and white wool carpet. Really adds to the aesthetic and flammability. What's the lava for? The viewers asked nervously. Oh, nothing, said the notable one. One of my subordinates was causing issues and didn't want to change, so I just watched it happen. That worked. Shepherds are finally going in. This is a great day for capitalism. The profits are kind of amazing. I just pick up some wool out of this chest and sell it to the guys. It's awesome. I was working on infecting more, but killed the zombie that was supposed to do the dirty work tonight. Last shepherds right here, bringing my total up to six and about 400 free emeralds per day. I was away all day 2079. I don't know why. I didn't write it down, so we'll probably never know. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the day. Next one. My next big project is taking all of the stone in this quadrant of the compound and turning it into grass. It's not exactly a very interesting adventure, but will look good in the end. I've got a lot of big plans for the compound. All those torches on the ground need to go too. Monsters started spawning because I broke so many of them. Weird. They haven't spawned here for generations. Now I'm gonna do my best to make this straight diagonal line of sand look a little more natural. It'll never look natural because it's not. This used to be a beautiful swamp. Wasn't recording for a day, but I finally finalized the shepherds and the grass project. Then I tried to see just how many emeralds I could get in a single day. The answer is seven. You remember how I said I wanted to get rid of those torches? Well, now we're upgrading to glowstone. You can feel the panic in those torch placements. Got the lighting done, at least this section. One day, I'll do it all. While I'm doing things that I've put off for a very long time, it's time to drain this old river water. Like I said, this used to be a beautiful river and swamp. Now it just makes my storage ceiling drip. This was a massive undertaking. I didn't even finish before running out of sponges. My sponges gotta dry out for a day, so I decided to test all my money-making methods, and I'll give you a real number this time. 1,358 emeralds in a single day, but I need more. I want you all to know, I would never switch my game mode to creative in this video, but days like this make me want to. Sponges gotta dry out again, but I have more emeralds, so I figured I'd finish up my sky bedroom. Even a house made of emeralds will never sell if it doesn't have two bedrooms. With the river draining, I've gotten to the point where my storage ceiling doesn't drip anymore, but there's still so much to do. Working on my house every other day, though, was a nice break. It kept me sane. Right under the bedroom, I also built this massive room with dreams of catching a warden in it. There's still a lot to do with the house, but it's looking a lot more complete than just a frame. Here, I decided to section off the river with dirt before draining it, and this worked a lot better. I'm not done, nowhere near it, but at least I've got a strategy instead of placing sponges randomly. Now I'm done. Seeing hard work like that pay off, well, that's what makes it all worth it. So now that I don't have a bunch of water underneath my land, I can really start making stuff look nice. It also gives me a lot more opportunity in this whole section to set up new business, and I will. More house framing, day 2096. My emerald supply is so good that I can pretty much every day. I'm just proud. I can't go a single day without marveling at my land. And after a long day of framing, day 2097, the walls are done, just need windows and floors. So I've gotta stay in camp to keep making emeralds, and there's no time like the present. So let's just light up everything. I'm telling you right now, this is gonna take a long time. A lot of buildings need renovation with this. It's a huge project, but in the end, the whole compound will be better for it. This section over by the fireworks show wasn't really that bad. It was mostly flat to begin with. And if the front gate's gonna be level, I've gotta move around some of that redstone. Why is none of this to code? Never put redstone on dirt! I can already tell that lighting up the whole compound's gonna be such a joy! The great lighting project gives me a chance to look at all the buildings in my area and decide what can stay and what can go. All the bees died so they can go. It was probably my industrialization. The cake factory is functional and but the roof was terrible. I won't even show the old one. You'll make fun of me. It's been so long since I played this world, my standard of building has increased tremendously. This is an empty dog army barracks. They don't live there anymore because they lagged me insanely. And my skeleton horse stable made of bone blocks is admittedly pretty terrible. I won't send them to the glue factory. They'll get to live in the stables. Well, I only had room for three. Sorry, buddy. My terrible roofing is definitely a theme of these outer buildings. Look at that. 
It's just blocks. That's a lot better. And my assalots get to live. The industrial side of my compound is just a complete mess. It's where all my auto farms are. The glowstone makes it a little better, but it's so uneven and there's so many weird buildings. I'm just gonna have to fix this in time. There's this section over by the melon farm that's basically a hill. I don't think there's any way to make this look nice. I got a break from it all though. That night there was a thunderstorm and I love shooting lightning bolts. Plus I'd never pass up a chance to get more monster heads. I just love them. The storm continued into the next day. That would scare me if I wasn't immortal. These skeleton riders have no chance of killing me on my main camp, especially since they mostly fought with each other. I'm still just lighting stuff up and getting rid of birthday candles. Each one brings me joy. Doing all these lights was incredibly tedious, but flying around the base at night and looking at the completed sections gave me motivation. Guess what? I'm still lighting, and will be for the next couple of days. You might as well just watch them. Oh, I guess this day I punched some weeds. How interesting. Hey clerics, I'm back for more glowstone. Guess what? It's day 2111. Ain't that fun. And no, I won't let you out of this hole. Hey swamp people, I'm here to install your lights. You'll owe me for this. You can pay in children. Yeah, so I'm pretty much done with the lights. Day 2113, I just flew around to see if there were any that I missed. Hardcore Minecraft is about vanity. This is proof. Time for the next project. I'm gonna be burying the beacons. If you bury a beacon all the way at bedrock, you'll get the powers from bedrock to the sky. In reality, I should have done this a long time ago, but with the new cave update, it was the perfect time. Basically, if I bury my beacons, I'll get my insane immortal powers in any of the caves beneath my compound, making exploring a lot better. It's not a hard job, just requires a lot of digging. I've already got the beacon placements down, just need to make a hole. Yeah, so that's basically what it looks like. I'll make it prettier in time for sure, but for now I'm just getting them buried. Each one takes about two days and there's three more to do, so I'll see you in a week. There were no complications of any sort, I tried to do them all with daylight shining down the hole for maximum safety. I know it's not recommended to dig straight down, but when you're as strong as me, you don't have to listen to the normies. Yeah, this beacon here was better off buried, it was clipping into the orphanage. I had a little fun with the last beacon and used some TNT to dig out the hole. By 2121, all the beacons were done. Now you might notice that there's no light shining, and I think that's because the beacon's too far down. I still get the powers, there's no change there, just no light. I saw a noticeable increase in my frames per second, so I'm okay with it. I'll take better performance. I did more testing today, and from what I can tell, I'm getting anywhere from 10 to 30 more FPS without the beams rendered. I can get the beams to show up for pictures and such, but I kind of like them down if it's going to give me better frames. Then I worked on prettying up the industrial side of the camp, which is never going to happen, I'm just telling you right now. If anything, I think these stairs just make the bad leveling worse. While I was over on the industrial side, I got rid of some useless stuff like the music disc farm. It served its purpose. I also probably shouldn't have a mushroom dirt farm. I'm just asking to get the whole compound contaminated. If the mushroom dirt farm was your favorite build and you're sad it's gone, I just want to let you know that you're weird. I'm thinking about putting some more emeralds on the base, maybe a wall all the way out here, so today I had to do some math. However, I basically came to the conclusion that before I put more emeralds on the land, I have to clean up what I've already done. My compound is miles beyond what most Minecrafters can do, but I'm notable and must prove it. Day 2127 was just making money when I heard a zombie in my walls. I felt quite insane after digging everything up, including the stairs, and not finding him. When I do find him, I'd like to kill him slow, but I can't. I'm too powerful. Made more money and fixed the orphan's roof. It's been leaking on their parentless heads. Also fixed the barn roof. It's weird. I care more about the horses than the orphans. New project time. I'm gonna do something pretty with this mountain face. It's kind of nice how it is, but I'm gonna do something even better. Just carved it out today, that's all. Finished the carving the next day. You can't even really tell. Sorry, before I start, I need sand. This shouldn't take too long. It's gonna be a pixel art, but let's be honest, no one likes seeing pixel art built, especially when you're as fumbly as me. This will be my history, written on the wall for all time. You'll see what I mean. But not today, I'm just getting everything laid out in dirt. This mural will commemorate 100 days, 200 days, 300 days, and all the thousands. Currently, I'm depicting my subjugation of the villagers for profit. I actually had to change the whole layout of the mountain today. I needed more room on my canvas. It's all taking a lot more time and concrete than I thought, but here's me in the first hundred. A wood house, cobble walls, and happiness. There's gotta be a better method of making concrete. I just feel primitive when I do it like this. All right, first panel's officially done, and I'm happy with that. It makes me feel. The second panel will depict me fighting the ender dragon on day 200. I'm gonna need way more black concrete for that, shouldn't have made so much blue. After killing many many squids for all this black dye, it's finally finished. I decided on black concrete powder for the end sky, 
sky instead of straight black. It also makes the dragon pop a little bit more, which was tough because the dragon's black as well. After putting blue up in the sky for the third panel, I didn't really like it. I thought it needed a different color. I loved the contrast of the blue and black in the first two panels, so I wanted every sky to be different. The third panel had a lot more dead space too, so I added some pillagers and a pillager outpost, which seemed to fill up the sky a little bit more. And after making the sky yellow, I knew that this panel was going to stand out. I think a blue sky here would have been way too much. It fits with the desert theme. Also, the yellow sky kind of looks like the setting sun. It's definitely striking. You notice it. It's 30 blocks of solid yellow. There's a lot going on in this wall already, but I think the yellow panel's the one that's going to draw everyone's eye in. The last panel will be me in the thousands with my emerald house at nighttime, so I went with a gray sky. I even took some time to put in a little cloud where nothing lives. Don't go looking. You know, I've had a lot of builds over my years in Minecraft, and this is definitely... Definitely one of my favorites. Oh, it's not done. In fact, it needs a lot more work. Hours of it, even. You'll notice that me in the last panel is covered in obsidian. I want that to be netherite blocks. I'll need 144 more pieces of ancient debris to truly finish this because hardcore Minecraft is about vanity. You know, I'm not sure what came over me day 2146, but I felt like doing a raid. So I did. It's kind of fun to break in big compound changes with violence. And I must say, fighting in front of my new mural like this felt amazing. Unfortunately, that was the only instance where I fought in front of the mural. Most of the time, the pillagers get trapped in a weird crevice like this. So like I said, I've got to go mine blocks of netherite, so now I'm just prepping for the big journey. Or deforest the next day, I'll be using the bed method, so I need all this wood. Yeah, sorry everybody, but when you play for 3,000 days, some days are just filled with chopping. So as you may know, this world is insanely old, so netherite isn't everywhere in my nether. Yeah, in fact, for the most part, I have trouble finding netherite, so getting hundreds of it is gonna be tough. I gave up on the first day. Day 2152, I decided to ride one of my nether rails as far as it would take me and see if it would get me some ancient debris. I got to the absolute end of the road and was still in the old nether, so I've got to do some flying. Fortunately, if if I go about 4,000 blocks away, I can consistently find netherite. So now I'm just gonna try to get as much netherite as I can while I'm out here. We'll see. The first day was terrible. I only found two pieces of ancient debris, which was not good for my morale. The next day was better. I got eight pieces today. What do you call a guy who's been netherite mining for three days? Me. You know netherite mining's like advertising. No one likes it. Someone with a larger brain than I needs to figure out how to get this stuff automatically. I'm losing my mind. So I've only been down here about six days, and my armor's about to break from all of the bed explosions. I'm gonna need stacks of netherite, and doing it how I'm doing it is not efficient. I mean, just to get home, it takes me a full day of flying through the nether. Oh, I'm not giving up. This needs to be done. When I put my single block of netherite into the mural, I got inspired. But there's no way I'm gonna be able to do it without some proper infrastructure. Look at my nether hub. It's terrible. So I'm gonna try resetting the nether. It's something I've thought about doing since the nether update first came out. So I'm just prepping, getting the coordinates of some of my further locations, like my mansion. I also took a full day to rip up all the rails, because these could be useful in the new nether. Yeah, you might look down on me for this, but I need the iron. I don't have an iron farm, which makes me want to make one. Worst case scenario, I can always reset the reset. I hope not to have to do that, but we'll see. One more day of rails. There's quite a lot of them. Okay, I did it. In theory, the nether should be reset and everything in the overworld should be right where I left it. So far, compound looks good. Oh yeah, it worked. 100% new nether. This means everywhere I go in the nether now, ancient debris will spawn, which just makes getting it a lot easier. First thing I did was just go exploring, had me thinking I should have done this a thousand days ago. There was a bastion right by my house. I never thought I'd be happy to say that. Eh, it's just normally I have to go like 2,000 to 4,000 blocks away to start finding this stuff, so it's nice to have it so close. One other thing I'm excited for is the chance to rebuild my nether hub completely. The old one was awful. I built my first nether hub on like day 60, and now it's 2160. It's gonna be awesome. The new hub's down at bedrock, which should make it easier to build long tunnels. I really like the looks of it too. I just carved it straight out of the basalt. I was very big brain. I'd pop back to my compound to get beacon powers for mining. Got it done. It looks so much better than the old one. I like the ash too. Just don't breathe in too hard. Now I'll be building my first tunnel, this one to Glass Town, and doing it at bedrock was way easier. There was a little bit of lava, but I'll take lava over having to build giant bridges. Okay, hello, glass to- Wait a minute, what's going on here? I didn't mess up the coordinates. This should be the glass town portal. Flew over there the next day, and there's no glass town. Just a giant mountain. Interestingly, part of the Pit of Profits survived, so I really don't know what's going on here. Oh man, 
What have I done? That made me check other things. Luckily, L-Town still exists. At this point, I was deciding what I liked more. The New Nether or Glass Town? I love both. I'm gonna see what I can do to give these refugees a home. Unfortunately, though, they're insanely glitched. They think the river is their home. Yeah, I set up beds and workstations and they won't leave. I really tried everything, but I think this is just a lost cause. It's almost like they think their workstations and beds are underneath the water. They're not. I checked, cause I'm crazy. I'm gonna see if there's anything I can do to fix this, but like I said before, worst case scenario, I can always reset the reset. Alright, I know this is gonna confuse everyone, but I reset the reset and then reset again to try to save Glastown. And even with all of that, yeah. Last town is still gone. Before I go back to normal, I want to look at one more thing. I'm going to fly all the way to How Did We Get Here Island. Yeah, it's gone too. There should be a big island here with all my How Did We Get Here achievement stuff, but they're not. The mobs are here. The Elder Guardian's stuck in a boat. So now I'm back to normal. No nether reset. Everything is as it was. I knew Glass Town would be here, but I still had to see it with my own eyes. It's gonna stay day 2178. It's part of the story. I tried to reset the nether, and it failed. Also, going back would just be confusing. So I'm just gonna redo my nether hub. It'll be a lot more work, but good things almost always are. It's gonna be very similar to the one I just built, a room down at bedrock with very long tunnels. I'm not gonna carve it out of straight netherrack, because netherrack is disgusting. That's it. There's no joke, no punchline. It's disgusting. I had a lot of stone laying around from the old mob farm, I'll use that. Basic shape's done now, it's much cleaner than my old one. Dug out my first tunnel, day 2182. This one's going to Glass Town. Hopefully it works. Worked perfectly, I knew I got those coordinates right. I put a rail all the way back too, not that I'll ever use it, it's only about 100 blocks. Now I'm digging a tunnel all the way over to my end portal, that'll be convenient. A lot of lava on this route though, almost popped a totem. When it was done, I came back home to go to sleep and there was a gas in the hub, what is this? There's too much bedrock on the ground to make the floor slab, so I've got to use carpet. I'm fine with it. I'm a little worried about it all catching fire, but I am a sucker for that chessboard carpet. Dad, no monsters can spawn on carpet. That's why I did that. Okay, now it's time to dig my way to some new nether. I'm trying to get one tunnel four blocks high that goes about 4,000 blocks. I'll also put a rail on the bottom so I'll have an easy train all the way to new nether. I first started to hit new nether on day 2187, but kept digging just to be sure. The tunnel's length is done, but this is why I need a rail. Flying back 4,000 blocks takes a lot of time, rockets, and is very tedious. Flying would be faster than using rails though, so that's why I'm making the tunnel four blocks high. I still don't regret building this all at bedrock. I'll take digging a tunnel over building a whole bridge over a lava lake any day. Yeah, sometimes it's a bit annoying when you have to tunnel through a lava lake, but that's what they make fire resist potions for. Done! 4,000 blocks, completely flyable tunnel. I know it was quick for you guys, but it was long for me. It's good I built this. If there's ever new updates, I've got a nice long tunnel that I can just add to to get to new versions of Minecraft. Who needs a reset? Before I get going, Going on more netherite mining, I've got to spend a day in camp, fix up my tools, and remind the villagers who owns them. So at the end of the 4,000 block long tunnel, I built a little hub for my netherite mines. Nice to actually have some infrastructure. It's not much, but I normally just dig down randomly and work out of whatever hole I find. The only thing it's missing is a rail all the way back home, but I was just hyped to get mining, so I flew over here. First day of mining, I got five ancient debris. Not bad, but the whole point of building this wasn't to get more ancient debris, it was the quick trip home. Looking back, I'm very glad I didn't end up resetting the nether. I think building something to make my problems go away is much more Minecraft. Anyway, these days are just me mining ancient debris. For art, no less. It isn't faster at all, but I feel safer for sure. Having a direct line back home is nice peace of mind. Some people would like to see me make my entire house out of netherite, and I'm telling you right now, it's never gonna happen. Alright, done mining for now, going back home, day 2200 felt like a good time. I got enough ancient debris for another block of netherite on my mosaic. Only three more, he said crying inside. If I keep mining ancient debris like normal, I'm gonna lose my mind, so today I made a bunch of TNT. So much TNT, it took me the entire next day just to place them down. Fun fact, when I was digging the tunnel for the TNT, I found some ancient debris. That's a good omen. Of course, the explosion took only a few seconds, but that's the fun of TNT mining. I got 15 ancient debris. I don't have the TNT to do this every time, but I wish I could. There's also just something fun about the whole process. Laying them down, blowing them up, collecting the loot. This right here, this what you're witnessing, this is a massive waste. Don't do this. I had to blow through some basalt and wanted to see how much damage TNT would do. It went over better than I thought, and I got a lot of debris as well. Here I got real lucky. I was digging a hole to bury my netherrack and found some more ancient debris. I'm all out of explosives, so it's time to go back home. Sad. Hey, at least I'm one more block of netherite closer to never having to mine ancient debris again. Day 2206, I was placing rails. A lot of rails. A lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of rails. A lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of rails! That's what I did all day, but it'll be worth it. Rail. I tested out the rail today. 
It's not done. If you did this with a real train, there would be several deaths. m m m more rails Alright, so now the rail's all done. I just wasn't recording for it. This day's about 10 seconds just to say that. Of course, I had to make sure that the whole rail worked, and just as I thought, I had missed a spot here. That was the only imperfection, and now I can travel 4,000 blocks to a new version of Minecraft without having to move a muscle. I'm gonna TNT mine again, I don't even care. I got all this gunpowder and don't really need rockets right now, I might as well. If you were wondering, a trip down the rail takes about eight and a half minutes or the length of a normal Minecraft day. Since I got you here, let me do some math for you. 4,000 blocks in the nether is 32,000 blocks in the overworld. Every block in Minecraft is a meter cubed, so that's 32,000 meters. I did the whole trip in eight and a half minutes or 510 seconds. That puts me at a speed of 62 meters per second, which comes out to 223 kilometers per hour or 138 miles per hour. In the overworld, the numbers are less cool in the nether. Enough math, let's blow things up. Safety is my number seven concern. My number one concern is never having to do this again. I'm sure I likely will, but a man can hope. The notes for day 2217 just say mining. By that, you can tell how done I was. Very, very done. So done that day 2218, I slammed into a wall and popped a totem. I had no extra totems, which is weird. I normally do. So I spent the whole next day just going home. My tools were getting pretty bad anyway. The timing wasn't terrible. I'm straight up sick of ancient debris mining. And I've got a lot of emeralds. So it's time for a new project. Going over logistics and measuring today. And I'm gonna need a lot of stuff for this. I have a lot of land, not to toot my own horn. One thing I really need is to go back a hundred days ago and build an iron farm, but it's too late for that. So I just burned through my iron reserves. This should be enough. Yeah, I kind of hoped to start construction on day 2222, but sometimes it doesn't work out. I'm gonna do a little rail around my base. I know I said earlier I wanted to build a wall, but I don't think that would work out very well. I used to have a sky rail that went around my whole base, and I loved it a lot, but the problem was it was so ugly. So I'm hoping this time around I can install a rail and also have it look good. We'll see. This mountain section's gonna give me a lot of problems, but if I can figure it out, I'll be golden. No. I'll be emerald. The problem is, this area is far too steep to actually have a rail without completely changing the whole way the mountain looks. So the rail's just gonna go down through the mountain. That's a pretty easy fix. Turtle approved. The rest of the perimeter is pretty much flat, so that should be really easy. I messed up. Got about 70% of the way done and ran out of emeralds. There's a single emerald in my emerald chest. That's almost embarrassing. Aw, oh, looks like your house is in the way of my rail project. Sorry, nothing I can do. Just move in with your parents. I'm sure I won't destroy their house too. But don't tempt me. Guys, I'm not that evil. I relocated the house. Who do you think I am? This patch of blue orchids was right in my way. They're my favorite flower. And it pained me to get rid of it. But I did. That's it, though. Fresh new line of emeralds. All done. Now I gotta wire up the rails and have no redstone, so it's time to burn through more reserves. I tried my best to get everything hidden. It's not hard, just requires a little more care. I just didn't want any redstone visible, so any redstone was gonna go under the perimeter. None of this is hard, even the section through the mountain. It's just rails. Getting redstone to work over water was a bit tricky but I'm notable and figured it out. And now, the emerald rail is done. I really like this one. Definitely solves one of the biggest problems with the old sky rail. The sky rail messed with the skyline. This is much more sleek. Just letting you know, through the rest of these 3,000 days, I ride this thing at night all the time for inspiration. I won't show it, just know that I do. It's not perfect though, I've gotta do some finishing touches today. This back section was pretty ugly. I also heard another zombie inside my walls and they will pay. Not sure how that one got in there. Maybe from draining the river. Oh well, he's gone now. So it's been a while since I've updated my maps. The old monster farm's still on there. I should probably get that. That extra block of emerald on the perimeter makes it look so much thicker. Yeah, spent the rest of the day just looking at it. Oh. Yeah. Day 2232, I'm working on the orphans. I'm gonna try to move them more efficiently. Moving villagers in and out of this place is always difficult, so I'm making some dedicated machines for it. I'll say the footage for all of it is very confusing because I was making it up as I was going along. I was trying to get this nether portal to turn on and off, but just wasn't having much success. I guess that's what I get for trying to have my own ideas. I really didn't expect this all to be taking me more than like a day, but here I am. But now it's finally done. I have an easy way to transport villagers from the nether to the orphanage. I'm not sure which is where so now I just have to connect up the portal to the new nether hub. This is only possible now because until recently, my skill has been that of a seven-year-old. And after hooking up the ghost town portal the next day, I should never run out of villagers again. So now I'm gonna test out the system with a little abduction. No, no, finish first. Make the child. I'll take it. It went very smoothly. Tiny bit of suffocation, but they're sturdy. And on the other side of the portal, he's connected to a rail that's connected to the orphanage. It's so simple. Then you just kind of shove him through the bubble elevator, and now he's mine. You may be sitting there at home asking yourself why I'm doing this. And I assure you, it's not just for the sheer thrill. I'm building an iron farm. I know I said I would never do it, 
but now I am. This golem heard the rumor and tried to take me out before I killed his whole family. He was close. Listen, bro, it's not my fault you're made of profitable iron. Don't blame me. I'm in L-Town today, setting up another portal, just in case I need more villagers. I don't really want to take from them, though, because I like them. Portal's looking good. It could use more emeralds. I'll come back here for day 2420 to totally do it over. Villagers are a prime ingredient in an iron farm because it works off their fear, so I need them to make more babies. I also put some signs down in the nether hub. Don't want to get confused. There's lots of tunnels down here. One of the things I'm wondering is where to even put an iron farm. They're kind of big, but I want it close to base so it's in the spawn chunks and it's always working. I dug out a big hole near where the sheep are and it didn't really feel right. But after looking at my spawn chunks, it kind of makes sense to have it over on the industrial side. I could put it exactly where the old monster farm was. Yeah, I'm going with that. So now it's time to move some villagers, but ran into another problem. I'm gonna have to build something more permanent for villager abduction. The way I do it is just sloppy. I've built machines to get villagers into the orphanage, but getting them out is still a pain. Shoving works. It's just not efficient. So I'm gonna blow out this wall and make a contraption that'll make it easier for me to get villagers out. No shoving involved. It's custom and proprietary. Stop looking at it. Aw, did you get out, little guy? Well, too bad. Eventually, I will make this look not so ugly, but for now, it's functional, which is all I cared about. Here, I'll show you how it works. It's very simple. First, get a villager and a boat. Then you bring him over into this area and flip the lever to bring him up to ground level. Uh, okay, maybe it's not ready yet, but we did budget for some villager suffocation. You know, maybe it's not perfect, but there was definitely less shoving. Now I'm putting together the first layer of the iron farm. I'm gonna try to build this thing myself with some custom features. Kinda just watched a bunch of different YouTube videos on how to build iron farms and took the best things I liked from all of them. This one will have a dedicated water lines, so if I ever mess up and kill a villager or a zombie, they're easier to replace. So instead of using a rail to get a zombie up in the farm, I've got a dedicated line. Oh yeah, and it worked flawlessly. No issues at all. Another thing I want to add custom to this farm is a kill switch, so if I want to, I can kill the zombie inside and turn off the farm. It's pretty simple, just some vertical wiring that'll move this piston and expose the zombie to sunlight. It's not the prettiest farm, but it's built to code. Today, I put the villagers in. I used rails, even though I said I would use the water, but the zombie's already in there and I didn't want to complicate things. And just like that, golems are spawning. Not where they're supposed to, but I'll fix that. Probably should have made it a little higher off the ground because golems are going to spawn all over the camp. It's just something I'm going to have to deal with. It's too late now. I'm not rebuilding everything. Eh, whatever. It's all on the industrial side and I use green carpet. You can't even tell. It's broken. A golem somehow spawned where the zombie was standing and killed the zombie and then killed itself. Oh well, that's why I built the water line. Had to wait till night for a new zombie, so I just rode the rail. See, I told you, wasn't hard. After some trial and error, I got the golems to spawn on a nearby platform. Now I just have to work on killing them. That wasn't hard either, I just built a standard 5x5 kill room. This thing's pretty much done. And after installing collection, now all I have to do is put something around it so it doesn't look so terrible. Yeah, I don't really know. The only thing I got going for me is it's on the industrial side, so it doesn't have to be too pretty. I thought it was a little poetic to use blocks from the old monster farm. Does it really need to be more than a big gray building? I don't think so. So now the walls are up, but I'm having trouble deciding what to do for the top. Flat kind of felt lame, and I've got an idea. It'll still be mostly flat. I'm using deep slate tiles to mix up the color palette, but in certain areas where it needs to be a little taller, I'm gonna try to make it look like smokestacks, like it's a factory. So far it looks okay, and the golems keep spawning. I'm happy with it. I got to a point midway through the construction where I wasn't really sure about it anymore, but I've come this far, might as well see how it turns out. I wanted to go for a smokestack, Kinda just looks like a growth that needs to be removed. It's still a functioning iron farm. Maybe it's a little ugly, but most iron farms are. I have plans to expand it and make it taller in the future so I can change the look then. Almost forgot to clean up that large hole I made. That would have been embarrassing. After that nice break in camp, I'm going back to ancient debris mining. Hopefully when I come home, I can finish the mosaic. Had to use the bed method because I had no more TNT, but whatever, it works. Something, something, ancient debris mining is lame. Seriously, so close to being done though. After day 2266, I only need three more pieces. But then all the next day, I only got one. What? Had some luck and got the final two pieces on day 2268. Railed home happy to know that I'll finish the mosaic on day 2269. Was this all a little bit unnecessary? Oh yeah, but looking at my finished work made it all worth it. I'm gonna sell this as an NFT for $69 billion. Please don't screenshot. I'm gonna go dig more tunnels in the nether, but first I wanna build some anti-fire armor. The goal is to not have to use as many fire potions in the tunnel digging process. Yeah, it definitely helped. I've got a full set of fire protection for armor. I die much slower, though I will say the ticks are still a little annoying. The armor's durability runs out fairly quickly. I've only been digging a day and I've gotta go fix it. I guess I never even said where I'm digging this tunnel. I'm going to how 
did we get here island? Because of the new Minecraft updates, this island is obsolete, but I still had a lot of stuff here and wanted to pick it up. A big goal of mine is to restore all the old nether hub tracks. That's why I made the iron farm. I need it. Though I got completely derailed and made a cool effect day 2275. I needed a break. A lot of people ask me how I stay motivated to play this world so long. And sometimes you just gotta make some time for some fun. Also money stacks and stacks of it. Back to labor, I'm gonna dig a huge tunnel all the way to my mansion, even though I never go there. Hey man, I've got 3,000 days, I might as well use them. So there will be a lot of digging in the next couple days, but I'm not gonna skip them, because just like my viewers, every single one is special, except you. Aiden Jamonski. If there is an Aiden Jamonski out there, I just want to let you know that this is personal and you should be afraid. Nah, I just have all this mining footage to talk over, so I'm calling out strangers that may or may not exist. Sometimes the game called Minecraft involves some mining. I don't know if you knew this. You know, I probably could have just locked an intern in my basement and had them record all this footage. You'd never know unless they got out. And then he said something else ridiculous that has nothing to do with the boring mining footage on screen. <laughs> I'm not even looking what's happening on screen. I'm just gonna say this line and put some random Minecraft footage on the screen. That'll do. If you've ever played Minecraft before, you know the feeling that I'm talking about right now. When you know you have to do something, but you don't want to. When you get that feeling, you gotta reach down deep inside yourself, into your very soul, and give up. I bet now you're starting to wonder when all this mining is going to end, and I don't know. The intern played these days. His name is Aiden Jamonski, and he's in very much pain. Tunneling through this section of lava was so bad, even my fire resist armor wasn't enough. I had to drink a potion. Yeah, but now it's nearly done. A lot like my spirit. Teleportation in Minecraft needs to be a thing. I don't know how they would do it, but it needs to be a thing. But they never listen to me. I've been asking for sandwiches for years. Finally! It's done. I'm at the mansion. The longest section of tunnel is complete. I don't come out here often, so I spent some time reminiscing today. I'm still proud of all the work I did here. Hey, swamp people. Glad to see you're all still living in squalor. Anyway, now I'm back home, at least the worst part of that is done. After all this work in the nether, I looked at my nether hub entrance and decided that I didn't like it. So I ripped it out, and I'm gonna build a new one with a year's more worth of building experience. So I really took my time, thinking that I would never have to change this again. But we all know that that's never gonna happen. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't help but make it look like the old one. I got a few new upgrades, like some basalt tiles for the front. Kinda missed the days where I just had my portal sitting on dirt in the compound. Too bad hardcore Minecraft is all about vanity. It's a little less boxy than the old one for sure. I'm not gonna show it. Go back and watch it again. I need the watch time. It's just missing something, and I'm determined to figure out what that is. Little quartz might be nice to break up all those dark tones. And it's from the nether. Maybe too much quartz? I don't know. Art is hard. After a lot of tinkering, this is the finished product. If you don't like it, too bad. The portal also needs a little bit of a trim up too. That's way too much crying obsidian. What would a portal to the nether be without a lava feature? Yeah, that's what it was missing. You can almost hear the tortured screams. Updating the whole nether hub got me looking at this building too. This is normally where villagers output, and I don't like it anymore. It's all connected to my villager infector, which really needs a spruce up. Tim, I swear to you. You're the only thing I'll never change. Of course, this is no tiny project. Villager infecting is serious business. And because I'm super smart, most of this is built underwater. Yay! Cat, if I could go back in time, the one thing I'd do is build everything to code and save chief. So now I'm rerouting water lines underneath a body of water. It's a very fun job if you like pain and suffering. Wiring up some simple redstone today. None of it on dirt. Look at me. I'm gonna push villagers with water now, not rails. You know, for the environment. This is where the villagers will shoot out, right near the orphanage. Convenient. I thought of everything. If they get stuck, I'll forcefully remove them with a piston. I lucked out too. Here you can see I'm one block away from crashing into my buried beacon. Even though I almost took out the very source of my power, I got the new water line done. Those villagers won't stand a chance. Kind of just cleaned everything up today. For example, took out andesite, put in stone, things only I would notice. But it works, and I'm available for a quote if you're looking for custom villager trapping at a competitive price. It's all incredibly ugly, and I marveled in that ugliness today. Eventually, I'll fix it. But today, hardcore Minecraft's not about vanity. One of the reasons I even went through all that was to stay in camp for my iron production, which looked pretty good. As you can see, I've got a lot of rails, but not nearly enough to get to the mansion, so I'm gonna have to stay in camp some more. So I decided to mine out an entire chunk. Why? 
because I can. Unfortunately, got about five layers down and realized I was about to blow into my storage. That's embarrassing. That's like mom always said, call 811 before you dig, and 911 if dad ever shows up again. So I found a better chunk of land right behind the library. Definitely nothing back here. I need to stay in camp to get more iron. Figured I'd dig a hole. I'm a simple man. I also definitely have some plans for these blocks. I'll reveal what that is later. If you ever feel bored in Minecraft, mine out a chunk. Just do it. It's kind of fun, actually. The stone layer was the most fun for sure. Thanks to my beacon powers, I could just insta-mine through all of it. When it got dark, I would stop. A wise man once said, don't mine at night. I mostly just did that so the footage looks nice. You're welcome. You know what I don't use as building materials? I can sell for profit. These idiot villagers buy rocks. Just listen to the sound of me mining. Tell me it isn't soothing. All right, fun's over. I'm getting into the deep slate. Time to roll up my sleeves. Yeah, that's a deep hole, but I'm only about halfway done. Changed up the strategy a bit today. Decided to go down in one big pillar instead of layer by layer. It isn't any faster, but at least I know how far I have to go down now. Yeah, after one day of mining deep slate, I decided I was gonna blow it all up. Don't mind me, villagers. Just preparing my weapons of mass destruction. Oh yeah, filled that hole up to the brim. Just like your dad. The actual explosion lagged a bit, but that's gonna cut out a ton of mining time. Now I'm more or less just cleaning the hole, most of the material is out. You gotta remember to always clean your- you know, I'm not even gonna. Ugh, nothing like sleeping in a massive cavern with lava right next to me. Woo! I feel good. I'm not sure using TNT was the best idea here. The whole thing's very messy. The worst part is easily the lava. I should have thought about that after all that nether tunneling. I'm certain by this point the iron farm has produced enough rails to get all the way to the mansion, but I've gotta finish. I'm driven. Still at it. A less notable man would have given up by now. Weirdly, it was thundering without rain down in the hole, not sure why. Went up to the surface, no rain, still thundering. Very, very weird. Nothing weird today, but as you can see, I'm nearly done. I was kind of surprised how few diamonds I found down here, so I made up for it and put some in the wall. I don't really need diamonds these days. I can buy armor and tools, and I've already got a full set. The hole is now finished. There's a few blocks out of place, but I'll get those. I wanted to be able to marvel in my great construction, so I put down a layer of glass. Now that I'm done, the empty hole kind of just makes me feel empty. Good morning, trader. It's a big day today. I'm placing rails to the mansion that I never go to, but maybe this will help. Hey, listen, you ain't famous unless you got a few houses you never sleep in. Almost done with this thing. Then it's on to the next thing. Rail, 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 rail. All done. Now I have to think of new excuses not to come here. Slept in my big bed in a giant empty room. I'm such a good decorator. The trip back is pretty much a full day. I was surprised I didn't make a single mistake the whole way. I know it took a while, but now the nether hub is fully updated. Kinda glad I didn't reset, but I'm gonna stay in the nether. It's time for a new project. Something I've wanted to build for a very long time. I am gonna build a wither skeleton farm. It's gonna take a very long time, but I guarantee you it'll be worth every day that I sink into it. Step one is to find a nether fortress in a lava lake, and that was the easiest thing about building this project. This is not a tutorial. I'm not qualified and won't be held liable for any bad farms. But for anyone that doesn't know how a wither skeleton farm works, and that's probably most people, I'll explain the basic concept, because it's actually quite simple. Wither skeletons, a very valuable monster in Minecraft, can only spawn in nether fortresses. I'm gonna try to make it so only wither skeletons can spawn in this fortress. But first, I've gotta check out my new computer. I know that's a little jarring. Kind of surprised me too. But yeah, now I'm playing on a new machine. The compound's getting so big, it made it hard to enjoy on my old computer. It just wasn't running too great. So I built the new one. Probably I'll do the same thing for 4,000 days. It's worth it. I've got fancy clouds turned on now. There is no day 2333, three, just 2334. Three, three, to be honest, I probably spent it marveling at my land on my new computer. Back to labor, and what you see on screen is pretty much all I'm going to be doing. Slabs. Stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of slabs. Slabs stop monster spawns, and I've got to slab up not just the entire fortress, but the area around the fortress. It's a lot of slabs. Way more than you think. I definitely wanted to quit several times while doing it. Every single surface must be slabbed. Nothing can be left. Any tiny imperfection will just make the farm worse, so I've got to make sure to do a good job. To tell you the truth, it's kind of nice to look at. These days will go fast for you. Just know they were long for me. I tried digging out some areas today. It's not fast. Master just slab. Can monsters spawn on glowstone? Yeah, I'll get rid of it. Day in town to fix up tools and get more food. I was starving down there. Had to deal with some protests on this day. But most days were just like this. Me slabbing. And that was it. This is the first time I ever had pain in Minecraft. It hurt my hand. Thought it was hard when it was flat. So much worse when it's uneven. I'm in hell. 
No, really, I am. Got tired of slabbing and started using lava. Pro tip, don't do this. Wither farms are great, but there's no way to cheat out of the slabbing. I just tried to keep thinking about all the beacons I'll end up making with this wither skeleton farm. That kept me going. Hey, I'm all done slabbing. Only because I ran out of the slabs today. So I'm back home, building something else for the wither skeleton farm. A chicken farm. It's very low tech. Made with no building code. But hey, it works. I just need a few eggs so I mined cobblestone in my cobblestone farm while those chickens grew up. It's no joke how much cobblestone I need, I'm still farming. It's amazing what you can do when you tape down your mouse buttons. This will likely not even be nearly enough and I've been doing it for four days. All right, that's enough cobble for now. Let's get back to the joyous slabbing. Oh, I'm already hating it so much. If you wanna do this, here's a tip that'll help your sanity. Make a perimeter. Figure out and then outline exactly how far your slabs need to go. It won't make it go faster at all, but at least you'll have a visual kind of progress bar, and that helped me. You can kind of start to see it take shape. It's kind of pretty when you look at it. One other thing that kept me going was trying to remind myself that it's not an infinite amount of slabs that I need to place. Every single one I place gets me closer to my goal. It's the small steps that really matter. Luke the Notable Life Lessons. When things get hard in life, don't give up. Get angry. I need to either write a book or start a podcast with all this wisdom. Day 2369 would have been nice if I wasn't placing slabs. But I am. You see, this is what I should get an intern for. Let them lose their mind. Aiden Jemonski died. I forgot to feed him. Well, I need more blocks. And I got an idea. Yeah, I kind of liked digging out the chunk and figured that's a really good way to get blocks and a little bit more interesting than watching me mine cobblestone in an automatic farm. So I'm digging out another chunk right next to the first chunk. The unofficial name is Big Chunkus. Just like last time, the first layers are quite fun. My beacon powers make it easy. It was really nice being next to an already dug out chunk. I always had a reference for how far I had to go. I actually streamed all of this on YouTube, which made it a little easier. If you were there on those days of streaming, Thank you. You helped my sanity. Maybe jumping off somewhere hey, really high. I appreciate it. Stay but notable. let's see. See, that wouldn't even kill me. I have to be Hassan. You're awesome, Luke. Please answer. You're awesome. I'm subscribed. <laughs> Hi, Hassan. And let's be honest. 3,000 days and really any good, like, 100... Oh! It's not about the builds. I think too many people that make these type of videos thinks it's all about the builds. It's all about what you can create. No. Any any real 100 Days Enjoyer knows it's about the journey. This will kill me, I believe. I won't die because I got two totems, but this should kill me. Thank you, Connor, again for the 100. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> yeah. If you fall off the top, you die. I hope that's how I die in the end. But otherwise, you give him a little bit of bread... You're going to wake up to 20 of them. I do not have a baby to kill. I'll kill a panda for you, hey, though. that's the end of me streaming. It's much sadder digging a big hole when you don't have friends. I think I'd like to do more streams for 4,000 days. I only did a couple 3,000 day streams, and I liked every single one. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see, and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future 4,000 day streams. Because even digging a massive hole can be fun when you've got someone to share it with. I also did some slabbing streams, but the audio was weird. I couldn't use any of it. I'm getting close, though, and this big brick of deep slate is satisfying to look at. You know, you know, what's great is after all this manual labor, I get to go back and do more manual labor. Dig, 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 dig. Done. Hopefully one day I make this three chunks. I put some glass down to child proof. There's so many unattended children on the compound. I wish I could fit a your mom joke in here, but she's just too big. Back to slabbing. You know, one day I won't be slabbing and then I'll miss it. If this is what I gotta do for infinite beacons, then so be it. I don't even know how close I am and I think that's the worst part. It's like every time I think I'm getting close, I find a whole new section that needs tons of slabbing. I just don't wanna die. Not by slabbing. Nah, you heard me earlier. I'd like to fall off the tower. I'm not done slabbing, but if I keep slabbing, I'm gonna lose it. So I'm gonna build the farm. This too will take a very long time, but at least I'll start making some profits off this. Maybe I should not have done this, now blazes are spawning! This is what I get for being impatient, but you gotta understand, I couldn't slab anymore. I've never made one of these before, but I already really just like the look of it. It's a weird build though. I had to trap a piglin in the middle, which is not easy. I got him. Don't get too attached. He and several others will die. This pitfall on all sides of the farm should take care of the blazes. It's a temporary solution to that problem. Sorry, wasn't recording for a day, but now I've got this really janky collection system. Nothing's to code. To be honest, this farm is dangerous. But 
it does work. And that's all I wanted. It's slow, but I got it to work. So now I'm just tinkering with it, kind of trying to figure out how I can make it better. The whole time I was watching tons of videos online trying to figure out how to make this thing more efficient. But if I really want it to be good, I need wither roses and a lot of them. And that's what the chickens were for. Welcome to life, chickens. I hope you enjoyed it. Every time the wither kills a mob, it drops a wither rose and I need them and don't care how many baby chickens die in the process. I also need a manual on how to build one of these things. I'm actively breaking it. Had to go back to slabbing today. Turns out my first perimeter was wrong. I need more slabs. Ugh. Here I'm putting in a tunnel from the wither farm to my nether hub. That should increase the safety slightly. There was a lot of lava in this tunnel construction. I spent two days on fire, but now I've got a rail from home to the wither farm. To be honest though, I mostly just fly. Slabs, that's all next day. Testing today, looks like I broke it again. No slabbing today, just getting ready for more slabbing. Slap, 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 slap. Slap, 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 slap. It's working a little better every day. That's giving me hope. Just looks so weird to see all the slabs on the nether like that. You can tell you're getting nearly done though by the amount of stuff that spawns on unslabbed areas. Look at all those piglins, disgusting. But you know I'm not gonna slab today. It's day two, four, 20. You already know we out here burning that sweet berry bush. I wanted to renovate the nether portal, do some other things over in L Town. I needed a break from all the slabbing. Yeah, that really didn't take that long. I pretty much just decked it out in emeralds because I am simple. I also wanted to make a little firework machine with a couple of different options. I got it done by sunrise. At least I thought I got it done by sunrise. That was a little embarrassing, but now it's done. You can pick your different fireworks and I think I put in some nice ones. Someday soon I'll renovate this. I know it's ugly. I just don't have the time right now. That was nice. This isn't but I gotta do it. Gotta say though, I'm getting really close. Right now I'm in the process of just flying around looking for rogue spots that need slabbing. The easiest way to do this is fly around and look for piglins. If one spawns, that means I messed up. I think I'm definitely at the point where I can stop worrying so much about slabbing and start worrying about the actual farm. You see, if I have a full platform of those wither roses, then the only thing that can spawn here is wither skeletons and that will make this farm so fast. But as you can see, the piglin in the middle died. I know I said I was almost done slabbing, but that does not mean I'm almost done. The piglin in the middle died again. Getting them is one of the worst parts. Next to slabbing, of course. I have an idea to make this farm work really, really good. And I'm proud of myself. This wasn't on any of the YouTube videos. So I went down to my local stronghold and picked up as many cobwebs as I could carry. I was having a lot of trouble getting wither skeletons to spawn and I think it's because I was standing too close. So I made a really long shoot for them to drop down so I can stand further away. This worked perfectly and they don't die from fall damage thanks to the cobweb. Just as I got it to work better, the piglin died again. Hooray. I put them up higher, but I'm telling you right now that caused me more problems later. Most of these days are just me testing and then breaking the farm, but I'm getting close. I'm just trying to get one full platform working, then I'll build multiple, then I'll be done. One of the things I really need is wither roses, so today I'm building a horrible atrocity. My old chicken farm was very low tech. This one will be industrial. Don't get mad, I guarantee you real chickens get treated worse. Oh, it's very ugly, but it works insanely well. Basically, as chickens lay eggs, those eggs are recycled to make more chickens. This machine breeds the chickens for me, so I'll never have to do this sort of thing again. I'm gonna pack them in there until they start to die, because I'm a good businessman. I spent all of day 2037 walking around the thing, trying to think of any way to make this less ugly. I thought of nothing. What do you think, chickens? Oh, you want out? Well, that's not happening. I decided to clean it all up with deep slate. Maybe I'll think of something, but really, who cares? And for the next two days, I just took a break and let the chickens grow up. Call it a weekend. Now I'm deep underneath the chicken farm, building the place where they will die. If I do this right, I'll be able to shoot eggs into this room to spawn chickens, spawn the wither, and get tons of wither roses. With the flip of a lever, I can divert the eggs down here instead of back into the spawner. It works so well. I had to turn off the sound. The thunderous chicken noises were just too much. The room got very wrecked while fighting the wither but I did get 200 roses. I'll take it. That's enough for a platform. With unlimited roses, now I'm fairly confident I can make the farm huge. Using wither rose platforms makes this thing so much faster and it's only about half done. Today I got three skulls just chilling. Normally that takes a lot of work. I'm working on safety too. I built a little enclosure. This whole thing could be ended with one ghast shot. Today I was trying to make an item sorter. Hopefully I could filter out all of the stone swords that the wither skeletons drop. I don't know if you know this, but I'm not interested in stone swords. I decided against it. There's just not a lot of room down here. Maybe a future project. Now I'm back in the chicken sorter, just getting it up to code. It works fantastically. I don't want it breaking. My wither rose farm works very
very well, but it does have one big issue. Every time I use it, I need to rebuild a big portion of it. It's not the worst thing in the world, I just have to set up a new auto dispenser every time I want to use it. I don't really think there's any way around it, so I closed off the farm's redstone. It's officially done. Well, you know I had to add in a layer of glass to make it look really sad. Hi, chickens! Bye, chickens! More platforms means more skeletons, but it also does mean more problems. I'm gonna need a piglin on each level or the skeletons get stuck. That's gonna be a challenge. And even with a piglin, they might just get stuck anyway. It's working very well, but does break about every two days, so I guess it's not working very well. Alright, chickens, you know what time it is. You may notice there's been no sound. Normally the wither is pretty loud. I turned it off because the chickens were too loud, and just noticed. It's their revenge. Anyway, I'm working on a third layer to the farm, and I'm definitely not qualified. It's not the platform, it's the pigs. They just keep dying. It's given me a lot of practice on getting them in there, though. I can do it flawlessly. I put new hogs in, it works really good, and then it breaks. I gotta stop that cycle. But first, it is time for the culling. This should be the last time, unless I decide to do this for fun. Three platforms of wither roses are now installed. I just have to get them all to work. When the farm is working, it's super fast. So many skulls. But inevitably, a hoglin always ends up getting killed. I had hope, though. Eventually, I'll get a system that works. Nice thing is, I'm getting skulls during the entire testing process. It's not a huge waste of time. I made the northern slabs five blocks deeper. That should help a little bit. It did. Didn't help my piglin problem, though. I swear to you, the Wither Skeleton Saga is almost over. I'm nearly there. Today, I did a full day of farming, got 13 skulls, and it never broke. Never in all my years of Minecraft did I ever think I'd have 64 Wither Skeleton skulls, but now, I do. I was so happy I decided to stream. I thought it might make the footage of me farming this farm a little more interesting. The piglin died. Look at all these skeletons that are not going down. Every time, I have fixed the farm. It has gotten less and less broken. How's the kid? The kid? Hey, the kid's all right. When will you stop making content about this? You could keep going forever at like 10,000 days. Day 10,001. I'm taking off all my armor and jumping off the tower. Thank you to everyone who hung out with me during those streams. You made farming a wither skeleton farm a lot more enjoyable. The hoglins are still dying though. At this point, I'll try everything. Here I put them on iron bars. Like the other attempts, that worked initially, but then it broke. This idea was a long shot, but using a collection tray at the bottom of the farm, I can change my three pig system into a four pig system. That allowed me to put all of the pigs completely out of reach. In theory, this should work flawlessly. After getting the four piggies in and some minor adjustments, I can assure you the farm is now done. Today, I got 19 wither skeleton skulls and it never broke once. The next day, I got 13 and still no breakage. I only got nine today, but I checked the pigs and nothing broke again three days in a row. I can't believe I just said I only got nine wither skeleton skulls. To increase my efficiency, I spent a day in camp making a very powerful Smite 5 sword. Her name is Shelly, and despite being just a diamond sword. She absolutely cleaves through these things. This farm took me about 150 days to make. Easily my biggest project yet. And now it's time to see what I'm going to do with all those heads. Of course, I'm going to be killing the wither, and I've got to do that about 72 times, so I'm going to make this efficient. I've never done this before, but you can use the end portal to trap the wither and make farming it a lot easier. And I totally messed up. Now the wither is free in the end. The fight wasn't hard. I'm very powerful. Now it's working, and it's pretty simple too. He just slashes wither dong until he dies. So, I did that 72 times. It took me three days. I didn't even have enough glass for all the beacons I'm about to make, but watch this. You're about to watch a man make 64 beacons in one single click. If you haven't already guessed, I'm going to be increasing my beacon array powers. The only thing I don't have is the materials to actually make the beacons. Since I'll be burying all the beacons, I'll use iron. And luckily, I have an automatic iron farm. It'll just take time now. I also want to mention that on this day, 2500, I updated the game to 1.9. So now the Warden, Deep Dark, they're all in the game. Updating broke my iron farm though, what horrible timing. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now, I'm on a new update and I wanna find that Deep Dark. I believe my best chance is to take my debris rail as far as I can, that should be new update chunks. I hope. Made a portal and it spat me out underground, I just hate that. It's so unsafe. Everything over here is on the new update. I'm so glad I built that rail. Hey, within a few minutes of flying, I found the new mangrove swamp. That's nice. There's a new kind of wood in these things, so you gotta know I spent my time deforesting. I have no idea what this mud is for, but I can't control myself. I need it. Enjoying myself in the swamp, that night I tried to breed some frogs. But for that, I need slimes, and getting that was just a nightmare. It's not a very magnificent spectacle. Bam, they just made a baby. Well, they make tadpoles, and I instantly destroyed them. Sorry, Frog, I didn't mean it. Okay, this time, 
I'm not gonna touch them. I bred frogs all over. I had no idea how long it would take to get tadpoles. The answer is about a day. Now what do I do with them? Gotta go home, drop off my frogs and all this wood. But I'll be back. I still gotta find that deep dark. I put the tadpoles on the compound. I hope they like it here. Before I go back, I've gotta redo my wood storage. Honestly, it's a bit frivolous. I just halved everything. No one needs a full chest for buttons. I also inspected the broken iron farm. It looks like all it needs is another layer of carpet. Yay, it's torturing them again. Speaking of, I've gotta get rid of these chickens. I don't need them, and they're lagging me. Thank you, chickens. Thank you. Changing up the plan here for finding an ancient city. Instead of going back on the rail, I'm gonna tunnel straight to one. Hopefully. Tunneling has worked for me in the nether. You just go straight long enough, eventually you'll run into the thing. Minecraft is big. I found diamonds, just no ancient cities. I knew it was a long shot, but I might as well try. Got some diamonds. Rode my rail back to the new chunks and found this weird igloo floating on air. Took that as a sign and just dug down. Maybe I'll get lucky. Oh yeah. Instantly found a huge cave with some skulk. This is the deep dark. I ran home! I was scared! I just wanted to make sure I had everything possible to survive down in the deep dark. A better hoe, night vision potions, everything. Okay, so upon further review, this doesn't seem to be a big deep dark containing the ancient city. Regardless, I can still spawn the warden down here if I make too much noise and he'll kill me. It was a nice little testing ground. I got to figure out what I can and can't do. If I ever got close to spawning the warden, all I would do was fly away. The night vision potion was essential for this. After a day and a half, I cleared out the entire area. A warden couldn't even spawn here if he tried. That was fun but I still want to find that ancient city. These night vision potions are amazing. I can just fly through the cave. No fear. I got another patch of skulk, but this isn't what I'm looking for. I found a skeleton spawner today. I really doubt I'll ever use it, but it's here. But look at this. After digging through just a tiny bit of skulk, I found myself in ancient city. I hardly even stepped a toe inside that thing before resurfacing. For safety, the first thing I did was install an exit. I'll be using a bubble elevator to get to the surface quickly if I need it. I made a room, put down way too many torches so I can't miss it. I really took my time going through the city, analyzed every move I was about to make. I don't often fear death in hardcore Minecraft, but today, that fear was definitely there. After getting more comfortable, I realized that flying around is actually a pretty good way to loot and look around the city. And you can see here the high up sections offer safety. There's lots of good loot down here, but what I'm really looking for is Swift Sneak, the new enchantment that I just found. Unfortunately, I didn't find Swift Sneak 3, just level 2 and 1. That just means I'm gonna have to find another ancient city. I'm not leaving yet, there's still a couple chests that are really hard to get and I want to see what's in there. Took me all day to get this one, had to wake up the warden several times. Times. The loot was garbage. I was just about to leave when I found the redstone room in the center. I didn't know what it was and it kind of scared me, so I left. Going back home, it takes a day. Then I mostly just put stuff away. I got all this random loot in my inventory. Oh look, the iron farm broke again. I guess I need more carpet. I mean sod. It should have been producing iron that whole time, but wasn't. Sad. Then I did more potion brewing and prep. I've got to get back out there and get Swift Sneak. I wasn't recording for the rail trip over here, just me stealing a villager's bed. Not sure how, but I missed this chest sitting right here. And inside was Swift Sneak 1. I went straight home. I was so happy. Unfortunately, I had to make an entirely new set of pants in order to get Swift Sneak on them, but that's fine. I got a nice new name, the Sneaky Sweatpants. And now I can sneak way, way faster. It might not seem like much, but it's actually really, really helpful. Also, you know me. I gotta have the best, but I don't have the best. I have two pieces of gear that aren't netherite. I've gotta fix that. Three days of mining, and then a relaxing ride home. Then I made my diamonds purple and my skin gray. Yeah, I know, it's weird. I just updated my skin out of the blue. You'll get used to it. Now it's time for the new beacon array. But first I have to do some math. Can't get this wrong. I'm installing 72 new beacons, and they all have to be in a precise location. Shouldn't be too tough. I'm not even gonna start the digging till I get all of them marked down and triple check them. If even one single beacon is off, I'll have blind spots, and they're hard to fix when they're at bedrock. But now all the new beacons are marked and their numbers match up. Step one, done. Step two is gonna be digging down all the holes. I'm gonna do all 12 all at once. I started with the holes that went through water. Those were the hardest. I could do about one and a half per day. It's a lot more digging than you think. This hole dropped right into a skeleton spawner. That could be useful. It's so close to camp. The most interesting thing today was I found an emerald ore. I love those. I found a whole mine shaft day 2549. This was under the camp the whole time. Oh, I can't wait to do this over and over again as I cover the entire world in beacons. Would you like to see why you should always carry a fire potion? That would have been a bad way to die. Nothing to report, day 2552. Something cool happens tomorrow, but not today. Today, I just play an advertisement. Day 2554, I dug my way into a giant cave. I was hearing a lot of zombie moaning and I think I just found where they came from. I took no chances, immediately gobbled a god apple. Then I laid them all to waste. 
never even popped a totem. And if you look at my inventory, I've got three more, all from the ancient cities. I'll have to go back there. I'll tell you right now, digging straight down is no joke. Don't do it unless you're prepared. I haven't really come close to dying at all in this video, except for this. That should be a lesson to you. Anyway, now all 12 holes are dug. Unfortunately, I thought I would have a lot more iron by this point and I need more. I even blew through all of my reserves. I still only have enough iron for two sextuple beacons, and I need 12. So I guess now it's time to make this iron farm bigger and better. Basically, all I gotta do is build more iron farms on top of the iron farm. Shouldn't be too tough. I even made the little villager pods out of wood this time. Thought they might be more at home. Got the villagers in today, and thanks to all of my new infrastructure, the whole process went smoothly. Oh yeah, they'll be right at home. It's just like an apartment in Los Angeles. I may have had a small water leak and broke everything on the lower level, but you know what? That's okay. We can fix it. I mostly just had to put down some more totally real looking grass. And now the zombie's in. It wouldn't be an LA apartment without a cannibal living next door. So now the farm should be working but it isn't. The good news is the bottom part still works fine. I haven't completely broken it. I can work on the top. More troubleshooting today. Tried to get a golem to spawn anywhere. Built three platforms. None worked. Should have went to Iron Farm College instead of Wall University. Feeling completely and utterly defeated, I went to my very first Iron Farm that still works to this day to try to see what I did wrong. I have a lot more villagers in here, I guess, and it's really far away from everything. Otherwise, I'm not really sure. Today, I just did a test. I wanted to see how long it would take at current production to get all 12 sextuple beacons. And according to my calculations, at current production, it'll take me about 140 days to get enough iron. It's possible, but it's slow. Then I compared that to emeralds, and if I really grind it, I could knock out a sextuple beacon in two days. That gave me hope, but I kind of want to use my emeralds for other things. And the whole point of an iron farm is that it makes iron without me having to do anything besides setting up the farm. I tried everything even let them breed. If I've learned anything from the Wither Skeleton Farm, it's that setting up infrastructure is always better than grinding. So I was determined. Well, it wasn't recording, but I fixed the farm. Can you guess what it was? I dropped the kill pit down a few levels and that seemed to help the golems spawn. So just to be sure, I made the pit even farther down. The golems won't die from the fall and it should make the farm a whole lot faster. Oh, it's definitely not compliant with safety codes at all, but it's working, I'll take it. It's still got some bugs for sure, but hey, at least it's producing golems. I tested the output Put, and now I can get a sextuple beacon in nine days instead of 14, but I think it's time for a third level. This one I just made entirely out of stone. I've broken the farm too many times to be cute. I also kind of just want this thing to be done and covered. One lightning strike could ruin the whole thing. Hey villagers, who wants a job? Great benefits, free rent, and you get to retire when you die. Accepting applications for the holiday season. I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to let you go. Really, it's out of my hands. I wasn't recording for the first part of the day, but now the third layer works. I have a triple decker iron farm. I got a little ahead of myself and today started putting up the walls. I looked down into the kill pit and realized that the golems just aren't dying fast enough. As you can see, they're getting really clogged down there. Only one can die at a time. Fortunately, I got an idea the same day and this gave me a chance to update my collection system. Instead of lava, I'm gonna use wither roses. This way, all of the golems die all at the same time and underneath it all gets collected by this minecart. I ran another test and now I can get a sextuple beacon in just about five days. I'm happy with that. And those numbers were with it being broken the whole time. So it's definitely gonna be even faster. I hope you don't find my design uninspired. It's just gonna be a big tower with iron written on the side. In my view, it's on the industrial side. That's really all it needs to be. I thought about making it out of iron, but that kind of just seems like a waste and I need the iron. Got the front side done and I like it. It's a monolith. It's also taking all of the smooth stone that I've ever produced ever. I should have made this thing out of dirt. I built five automatic smelters in the middle of my storage just to keep up. I also wasted many, many rockets just flying around looking at the thing. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. Now I'm gonna do a big window here, cause it'll look nice, not cause I ran out of stone or anything. I like it. You can see the golems fall. My beautiful industry. Please look away, OSHA. This shot here is definitely not safe for work. I tested again today, but it seemed to run as fast as a double layer farm, not a triple. I'm pretty sure it's just because I was standing deep underground where the collection system is. I can fix that. Put in a few water lines and now all the iron transports to the surface. That wasn't too tough. Finally finished the walls today. It was nice to have that done. However, even with all my tinkering, the top layer is still not spawning golems and I don't know why. I also totally messed up the kill pit. It's off by one block. The golems hit this lip. 
This is my quick and dirty fix. Hopefully that works. Ripping out the entire pit would kind of be a nightmare. Please don't ask how I got stuck in the farm with a zombie. I was not afraid for my own life, but I just broke the farm. It's not the worst thing in the world, thanks to that water line I installed, but it's still very much annoying. Got a new zombie that night. This whole day was embarrassing. Now the middle layer broke. The zombie's there, the villagers are there, nothing spawning. I got the idea to let the villagers sleep, and maybe that would reset them. And you can see here, this villager actually wasn't paired to his bed. That's 100% the issue I'm having on all levels of the farm so today I tried to install a reset button I don't know why I did what I did I broke a blue block that's obviously a water line no everything is broken again so far it looks like the reset button is working it's essentially just some pistons that'll make the villagers feel safe shutting off their access to the zombie wiring it all up on the same circuit was anything but easy this building's like a hundred blocks tall but it works with one lever flip I can put every villager to sleep hopefully fixing the farm wasn't recording for the daytime but the farm worked beautifully then my two-year-old wanted a tour so I showed her my polar bears tested the farm today and it's fast if you do the math it's nearly a thousand iron an hour and it's made in the spawn chunk so in theory it should produce every day forever all the time all this iron is only about half of what i need but now it's only a matter of time so i decided to go back to my old iron farm i think it's finally time for them to be free it's gonna be tough getting them down but there's a safe bet at least two of them live the plan was to simply send them down a stream of water many many died but hey at least i won't have to look at this ugly thing in the sky anymore the survivors fell inside this dark oak forest and i'm gonna make a home for them yeah, but then I found a cave and got a bit distracted. Villager freedom can wait. As you may know, I have lots of iron thanks to my new farm. But when I'm all done with beacons, I'm gonna need somewhere to put all that iron. It's zombie villager time. My favorite. I've got massive plans for my iron economy. I think it could be one of my most profitable ventures yet. Trying to figure out where the iron people will live and it kind of just makes sense to put them next to the sheep. I'm gonna try to make it look like an iron golem. It won't but I'm gonna try. Before I finalize that though, I've gotta do some work in the iron farm. Here I'm in the collection system. I'm not an expert, but I think I just made an item sorter. I'm trying to filter out the flowers that get produced in an iron farm. I don't really need them. It took about 30 hoppers, but I got it working and I'm proud of myself. Time for even more upgrades. I'm gonna try to transport this flow of pure iron all the way to the place where it will be sold. So now I'm digging a massive pipeline underneath my base. Just hope I don't hit anything. Well, look at that. This should have all been done in a day, but I keep running into old stuff. But now it's done, I've got a pipeline all the way from Iron Farm to Iron Marketplace. It'll be so nice, just grab some iron and sell it. Easy. The bubble elevator was a bit tedious to build, mostly because I'm underground with no escape. Hopefully if I do this right, I'll never have to do it again. You can see here it's working. Pure iron comes all the way from the iron farm right into these chests. I was very proud of myself. I will say though, I wasn't too proud of how the iron farm actually looked. White carpet just didn't look right. Now that looks a little more industrial. Now that everything's working, I can finish the building. You know, it doesn't look too bad. About as good as the sheep, to be honest. Got two new villagers in there. They'll both give me one emerald for one iron. It's a good deal. So now I'm just ramping up my employment by offering signing bonuses they'll never get. You're gonna love working for me. Now get in the hole. I'm sorry, sir. I just don't think your injury was workplace related. Yeah, no, sorry. The company doesn't offer life insurance. No, I get that. I get that. It would just be too expensive. Too many claims. If any of those jokes are relatable, please get help. No, no, no. Not you, villagers. You're stuck here. All right. Now they're all in there. A few aren't working, but I can always kill them. Remember that, villagers. Today I had to give them freedom because they weren't working. I thought maybe that would help. It worked for some of them. I'll figure this out. Today, I tried getting them all to sleep, and that fixed even more. All but one are now fixed, and that makes seven working guys. I think that's enough for me. I was very nice to the last one. Gave him his own apartment, his own bed, and he still won't work. I don't know what happened. He just burst into flames. It was so weird. His replacement is already on the way. You won't believe this, but the entirely new villager still won't work. Whatever. I'll just leave him in there. Seven is still very profitable. After all that, I'm glad to finally say that it's time to start putting in beacons. Remember, all I've done for these things so far is the holes, so I've got to dig out 12 new beacon spots. Because of all the deep slate and the fact that I have no beacon powers while doing this, it takes about a day to dig it all out. But it's nice to see my progress at the end of the day. Today, I got a nice little corner done. Fun fact, this one corner is the size of the original beacon array. Again, so glad that I built that wither skeleton farm. It just means if I ever want to do this again, it's going to be so much easier. The iron farm too. Can you imagine how long it would take to mine all of this iron? Oh, halfway done today, I've completely filled out the the entire northern section and the area is so big that the beams don't even render it's not exactly the most fun work but in the end it'll be so worth it you can do it just a few more days
go down in that hole and finish what just started. I would need 20 more sextuple beacons to upgrade my current array, which might sound crazy, but it's totally possible. Would you want a video on how I set this all up? I doubt anyone has the resources to actually do it, but it might be nice to see how I did it. Anyway, I'm almost done. I know watching me set up a beacon 12 times in a row isn't the most riveting. Done. 16 sextuple beacons all coming together for my magnificent beacon array. A 200 by 200 square of beacon coverage in which I simply cannot die. If you count every block that's affected by my beacon coverage, it's just about 15.3 million. It took hundreds of days to set up the infrastructure to make this possible. But thanks to that time, going further won't take nearly as long. That will have to be a project for another day because today I have a new project. I'm gonna do a new emerald perimeter to mark where my beacon powers end. The biggest reason I saved all my emeralds is I was planning on doing this the whole time. It's really nice to know where my unending power starts and ends. I guess it's not really unending power then. I could have swore I had enough emeralds for this but actually ran out day 2640. It's a massive perimeter and I'm only about halfway done. Time to get to work. It's really getting the villagers to work. I'm the owner and don't do much. Glad I noticed the whole structure was off by one block today. That would have been embarrassing. It's very striking. Totally unnatural, but that's the point. Building it all got me to realize how much land I can't die in now. It's pretty insane. My powers go all the way out to this mountain that I never even go to. It's so unnecessary, I love it. I would have been done a long time ago, but I wanted to make sure these elevated sections on the side of hills and mountains looked good, and that took more emeralds. It really gave me a chance to look at a lot of this outlying land. There's so much potential for new builds. 4,000 days will be chocked full of good stuff. Day 2646, I finished the perimeter and broke it in by lawfully killing this trespasser. It's hard to even get all my land in one frame. There's just so much of it. Almost everything I've built in my immediate spawn area is now completely enveloped in beacon coverage. I could probably use one more section around the rim to get the barn in there, but that'll take 120 more beacons or 360 more witherheads, which I can do, which is don't want to right now. Mater came over today, gave him a tour, and decided to make a really powerful fishing rod right in front of him. It's got absolutely everything, and he named it. Sweet coon. Back to labor, I'm chopping trees in my new land. There's a lot of ugly ones. Most were just half burned by me, so I'm here to finish the job. While chopping, I found those villagers that I totally forgot about. They're not dead, but by the amount of golems down here, they've been very afraid. I dug out a cave for them all to live in. I'm calling it the grotto. They will live here in peace until I need them for industry. I even gave them some jobs in farmland. Turned out to be a nice little build. The whole thing is very hidden. I think they'll live there for a long time. Or they won't. I don't really care. With all these extra beacon powers, I decided it was a good time to go into the caves. With full beacon powers, I have absolutely no fear. The caves are so fun when you can't die. Did you know this is the first time I found an amethyst? Yeah. No, 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 I had to check. The first time. Took me 651 days. Had a lot of fun down here. Wasn't even scared of the poison spiders. Hopefully lighting up these caves helps my creeper farm to do better. It's been chronically bad. Look at all this emerald ore I found. I love that stuff. Here I'm specifically around the creeper farm. As you can see, lots of monsters are spawning. Went back to the wither farm today. I don't really need the skulls. Just wanted to try out Shelly with netherite. Oh yeah, one hit kill every time. The farm is so fast that in the same day I could get to actually killing the wither. And now I've got a shulker box with a sextuple beacon inside. Just in case I ever need it. And I needed it the next day, because I'm gonna kill the warden. But not tonight, it's a long trip over here. Give me your bed, villager. I'm not just gonna run straight in. First thing I did was set up some safety features like this portal straight to the ancient city. I'm also gonna clear out a huge area. I wanna fight this dude on flat ground. There we go, all cleared but I can make it even safer. I had to dig a hole all the way to the surface so my beacon would work. I truly took every precaution. Not gonna lie, the beacon looks a little funky down here, but now I've got beacon powers in the ancient city that warden's going down. There's no achievement for killing the warden. In fact, it's supposed to be avoided, but never tell me not to kill something. That just makes me want to kill it even more. A frontal assault on this thing would be completely foolish. It can kill me in three hits. You can see here I tested the warden's strength and it absolutely slaps. I could have kept shooting it with my bow, but I really wanted that last hit to come from my sword. And it did. There it is. The warden slain. Now all it drops is a single piece of skulk catalyst, which I don't really agree with. I think there should be a much better drop from killing the warden, but I don't make those decisions. I really wish it dropped its head, so I just renamed the catalyst Warden's Head. That'll work. I took out another warden that day just for good measure, and to prove my dominance. And now I've got kind of an interesting idea. You'll see. I'm gonna make my own warden head. Out of warden heads. 
Well, not really, but I'm gonna do my best. To make it real, I've gotta go kill the warden 15 more times. Shouldn't be too bad. Now, I could've killed 15 more wardens with the method I used earlier, but I'm gonna build a machine for it. It's nothing too fancy, just a simple trench with wither roses. And because the warden is an absolute moron, it falls right in and starts dying. So now I'm just gonna be farming the warden. It's kinda ridiculous when you think about it. All I really have to do is just stand here. The wither roses do all the work. However, if I slash him with my sword, I can kill him much faster. My best time was 45 seconds. Got 15 heads, just like like that. And I swear to you, they're all from dead wardens. And that's not all. I guarantee you there will be much more warden domination later in this video. But first, I've got to fix up my tools and say hi to the villagers. I want to find a closer ancient city for easier warden domination. A strat that works, at least right now, is find a really extreme hill like this. Generally, underneath these, you'll find an ancient city. What did I tell you? I just flew right into this one. Ancient city, here we are. Safety comes first. Had to dig an exit. But I'll be honest, I was a lot more comfortable in the ancient city. You just gotta follow the law. I got all the loot today. Just one extra god apple, but I'll take it. Took another day to loot, but if you've already got swift sneak, there's not much here you can find besides god apples. All right, so now the plan is to go back home and dig a tunnel all the way here. It's only about 10,000 blocks. It's actually two tunnels. One will be in the nether, one will be in the overworld. Ooh. Nether tunnel's just about done. Just have to fly back through the overworld and connect it. That wasn't too hard. Now I've got a quick way back to my new ancient city. You may be wondering why I'm even here, and I'll tell you. I'm gonna trap a warden. You can trap a warden super easy just by digging a trench, but I wanna get the warden all the way back to my compound. It's gonna be quite the challenge and I'm still not entirely sure how it's all gonna work, but I'm gonna try. My idea is pretty simple. I'm just gonna trap the warden in a warden trench and then dig a big tunnel all the way back home. But I realized today I dug 500 blocks in the wrong direction. That's embarrassing. So let's just get to the point. I know you don't want to watch me dig for 20 days straight. See, that's much better now that the tunnel's done and I can work on exactly where the warden's gonna be chilling underneath my compound. My trapped warden will live right underneath my emerald tower nearly at bedrock level. He'll be in this glass prison so he won't be able to dig his way out. I really gotta make sure to set this all up right because once there's a warden in here it's kind of hard to do construction. Minecraft told us to avoid the warden and I'm gonna put it on display. When it comes to exploiting nature for pleasure, of course safety is my number one concern. I'm building this thing for the warden and it would be real embarrassing to die. The entrance will be right by my big warden head so if you want to download the world and check it out that's how. It'll have a top view and a side view. Just be careful of the side view, you're liable to get shot. Building the room is great and all, but now I'm working on the actual logistics of getting the warden in there. One thing I got going for me is the warden's incredibly dumb. Some trapdoors and water should be all I need. So now I just have to figure out how I seal off this whole chamber without coming down here. My issue is there's a giant hole in the wall and I've got to fill that with the press of a button. Getting that figured out was really something. I'm so glad I built this all to code. Alright, moment of truth. This whole big opening should be closed with one button press. Uh, yep, that works. Worked. Now I just have to reset the whole system. One last day of final inspection and prep, I am catching a warden that's very dangerous. Yeah, another layer of plexiglass can't hurt. Well, it's actually not time to catch the warden yet. When I was digging the big tunnel, I found a much closer ancient city. This one's only about 3,000 blocks away. I got real lucky. The system hasn't changed. It's still just a warden trench. The only thing it needs now is a little machine that'll hold the warden in place while I set myself up to run from him. Yeah, that's the plan. I'm gonna have it chase me 3,000 blocks. I'm not excited. All right. I've looked over everything like five times, 10 times, 20 times. I'm ready. Step one is spawn the warden. That's easy, just make noise. Step two is shoot the warden so it follows you with an undying bloodlust. Step three, make sure the warden goes in your trench. Step four, you gotta name him and now's probably the best time. Step five, go down into your tunnel and prepare to run. At full sprint, the warden can't really catch me. But even if he did, I dug this tunnel high enough where I could fly away. Even with that though, it wasn't exactly fun to be chased. The only thing I really didn't like doing was having to reset the warden's anger. I'd have to shoot him with a bow and this was my least favorite part. Okay, you're here we are. Last little home stretch. If anything goes wrong, it's right here. Please be in there. Please be in there. Please be in there. Yes! The warden's named and standing on glass, so it'll never get out. That there should be an achievement. I let it cool off for a day and now I can finalize the whole design. I left this block open as an emergency exit. What's nice is when the warden's calm, you can get real close without it attacking you. But if it is angry, just don't go past the red line. You'll get shot. Probably a smart idea to put him down at bedrock rather than in the tower, but hey, never say never. After all that, I need to make some profits clear my mind. But just like that, it's on to the next big thing. I'm gonna make this whole wall less ugly. And I'm gonna do it by paying homage to all of the peoples of the world that watch 100 Days. It's gonna be a big mosaic of a bunch of different flags. The first 
first one is of Ohio. It was the first suggested. If I butcher your country's flag, don't get mad at me. Everyone's getting a three by three. Some worked out perfectly like Japan. That was an easy one, but sorry, Indonesia, and that's the best I can do. They're in no particular order, and I think that's gonna make it all look nicer in the end. I kind of just tried to put different colors next to each other so they wouldn't all clash. But now I'm already out of gravel and only halfway done. Gravel break. Want to give a quick shout out to Nigeria's flag. It's easily my favorite. Hey, it's original, man. There's like 20 flags on the wall already that look like British and American ones. And if it's not one of those, it's some sort of plus. Get an original idea. I am now shortening the wall because I'm running out of countries that actually watch me. I only put fan suggested flags on this wall. If a fan didn't call out the country, it didn't go up. The wall also needed some shaping, but now everything will fit in there perfectly. Shout out to the Bahamas. Your flag's awesome. This one could be Chad or Romania. I don't have enough colors to differentiate. As you can see, I'm very close now, but again, ran out of gravel. 27, 27. Too bad I spent it getting gravel. Just a few more. I guarantee by this point, people were just suggesting random countries, but hey, I'll take it. It's done. And I gotta say, it's beautiful. Just want to thank everyone out there that watches these videos. You're the reason I do it. So really, thank you. I really tried to get all the suggested countries on there. If I missed you, let me know. Now it's time for another monument. And for this one, I'm going to blow through all of my diamond reserves. I've been saving pretty much all my diamonds for the last 700 days to build this monument. And now it's time. I did a little mining off camera. So I already know where this monument's going. Right by L-Town is this cute little hill with a bunch of dark oak trees. You'll see why I wanted dark oak later, but for now I'm just taking out all the regular old oak growth. I kind of just cleaned everything up. Can't build a monument in a dirty forest. I also want to pave a road over there. You got to think about the people who can't fly. This creeper wanted no part of me building with diorite. I don't get why people don't like it. I think it looks nice. Just going to leave this on screen for all the people that don't like diorite and granite. And there's nothing you can do. Road's done. Now it's time for the monument. It's going to be a stack of diamond blocks stacked on top of each other to show my appreciation. This is a monument to everyone who's ever made a 100 days video on YouTube. Thank you. I'm also going to put up signs with the names of several hundred days creators. That's why I wanted dark oak trees for more space. I only put up names of people that submitted their names, so no one's on here that doesn't want to be. And if you come to the monument, I guarantee you'll see some names you recognize. So thank you again to everyone who's ever made a hundred days video on YouTube. I will come back here at some point in 4,000 days, so if you want to get in the monument, all you got to do is make a hundred days. Do it. You've probably got about a year, so there's no excuse. Thank you. You're all notable. All right, now that that's done, it's time for another project I've been putting off for just far too long. It's time to level the compound. This is gonna be huge. You gotta remember, this is not just digging. I'm gonna bump into tons of machinery and it's all gonna need renovation. This is gonna be an absolutely massive amount of work. However, it will give me a chance to look at all of my farms and fix them, get them up to date. The industrial side of my compound needs the most leveling by far. And that's where a lot of my oldest buildings are. They could all use a little renovation. And I didn't even mention the fact that once this is all leveled out, It'll look really, really premium. I'm actually really excited. I get a chance to gut my farms, make them more efficient, and ultimately get more profit. Things will be a bit weird. The stone cutters don't currently have a roof. Also, the melon farm is totally floating in midair. But I guarantee you, by the end of all this labor, you won't even recognize the compound. Except for the giant emerald tower. That's kind of hard to miss. At this point, I'm just trying to get the digging done. I'm not really going to start touching farms until all of the earth is moved. I've been going over this fairly quickly. You might not have noticed that it's been almost 10 days of solid digging. I can't wait to redo the iron farm. So much of it was built on dirt. Pretty much all my farms were built on dirt. I just didn't know any better. I'm really glad I installed an off switch in this thing. It's absolutely wrecked. The industrial side, which required the most leveling, is now pretty much done. It looks awful but it's supposed to. Unfortunately, a lot of things have to be completely rebuilt. I know this diorite road is historic, but it's gotta go for now. I've also locked the orphans inside. They'll come out when it's done. Once I got the industrial side done, everything else came easily, and now all the gross leveling is complete. I've kind of been looking forward to tinkering with everything. This is gonna be fun. Iron farm will be first. I know it's new, but it's also the strongest element of my economy. First thing I did was just get it down to grade. It was unsettling seeing it float there. Then I ripped up the entire floor and put down some stone slabs. It didn't make much sense to have carpet in a factory. That should stop the golems from spawning where they're not supposed to. I'm also going to fix the pit. It's been off by a block since its construction. It was a much easier fix than I thought. I just made it bigger. It's so nice having access to unlimited wither roses. I also installed a safety fence. I've never fallen in, but that's what the guy that falls in and dies says. The off switch wiring is now all much higher up, but it still works. And I can jump up and hit that lever, so it's gonna stay. It all works already. There's no sense in breaking it just to make it a little more convenient. I know I'm trying to fix up the farm, but now it's not supplying iron where it needs to, so I guess I'm running through the sewers. All right, man. Damn, everything's good down here, no clog. Ah, here's the issue. My new slab floor was blocking the flow. <laughs> and now with everything working again, the last step is to lay down some sod. Now I'm gonna tackle the melon farm. Cause it's big, old, and I'm worried about what's inside. Like your mom.
Um, one of the first glaring issues is this water line. It's mostly made of dirt. Really, all I gotta do to get this farm functional is move that water line, which is much easier said than done. Oh, no way I'm gonna redo the whole thing. It's on dirt pretty much the whole way to the Melon Men. But I got it moved and up to code, and now it should all work very well. Now that everything's moved and secure, I got it framed out. But I don't want to go wood all the way down, so I'm doing a design for my melon business. That's a good start, but now I kind of want to move it over. Logo's done. I like it. I'm also going to take some time and renovate the top, because it needs it great view from up here. One of the things that this building really needed was an elevator, and now I have one. And I gotta do that roof. Not gonna show the old one. You'll make fun of me. I might go up there from time to time now. Wasn't recording for a day, I've already got the new base for the bamboo farm done. This one's gonna get a much bigger collection system and some other features. Now I've moved my cactus farm underneath the bamboo farm. The old one was just so ugly. It's a really good thing I did this too. Minecraft's updating bamboo soon, so it's nice to have infrastructure. Here's another issue that I totally forgot about. I sealed off my rocket farm. It's behind all the flags. I had to dig my way in. I'll have to figure out something for that. Nah, first I'm gonna do a nice place for the stone cutters to live. And yes, I'm doing granite and diorite, but today was just flooring. That's what I get for doing herringbone. Herringbone is what your mom wishes she had in the kitchen, but your dad didn't want to pay for it. Getting everybody in there wasn't too hard. I'm an expert villager herder. I moved my cobble generator underneath the stone cutters. It just made sense. And now the stone cutters finally have a roof over their head again. Yeah, it came out a little boxy, but it's on the industrial side. Today, I ripped up the old cobble generator. It was mostly made of dirt. Then I got real dirty on day two. 2769. Same thing the next day. Just dirt. All day. In the rain. Then I didn't really get anything done. I kind of just spent today looking at my egg farm, wondering what to do with it. Ah, then a golem spawned. I was hoping moving it all down would stop that. Ah, just put down more green carpet. It's not a huge deal. I've been putting off the library because, well, look at it. Any construction involving villagers is tough. Luckily, these guys can fall pretty far. Really should have done the flooring before putting them all down here. That was an oversight. It took a long time, but now I've got all the librarians into one spot. Unfortunately, they have much less freedom of movement in this design. Oh, well. I didn't record for a day, but now it's all looking much more like a building. I installed an enchanting room that doesn't look like it's in a dirty basement. That's an upgrade. I also tried to upgrade the carpet. That just involved a lot of shoving. I'll be honest, I think there's a lot of wasted space in the library, but it's functional, so I can't complain. I think I'll revisit that one later, but for now, it's done. 2777 was all dirt laying, which is kind of nice. Despite being the luckiest day of the series, I had to end this one early. My cat got out. I found him in the neighbor's bushes. He was fine and got back to it. And now I'm starting on some bear renovations. Here I put in a nice little viewing window for the pandas. The polar bears didn't require too much work, just had to put some more glass in. One thing I've always hated about the panda exhibit is these big jungle trees. Not the trees themselves, but the vines. They just end up hanging down outside the exhibit, and it looks real sloppy, so today I'm trying to get rid of all of them. I can literally fly, and that was still tedious work. A lot of work went into this new panda exhibit. I might actually come visit them now, but I think this little window into the panda cave is still my favorite part. The melon men have been in need of an update since they were constructed. What even is that? I like the idea of them all being in a big melon, so I'm gonna make it look like a big melon. Since building all my iron stuff, I've kind of neglected the melon men, so it's nice to give them a better home. I've lost a lot of them over the years. I started with 10, and now there's only five. All right, so now they no longer live underground, but that just means I've got to move a bunch of stuff. One of the things I really wanted in here was a speed farm on the same level. I think I'm good enough to put all the redstone underneath. We'll see. So far, so good, and no villagers have been mangled. Probably would have got it all done today if I didn't get a bunch of water in the machine right here. But after another day of troubleshooting, now it's working perfectly. Stay behind the wall, villagers. Employees only. They aren't employees. They aren't even contractors. Put some carpet on top. You can see by that bone and arrow that a skeleton spawned up here. And there it is. All done. You know, it looks like a melon. The orphanage only has to move down one block, but this thing that I built is gonna be the biggest challenge. Yeah, I just ripped the whole thing out today. I can rebuild it. Moving it all down one block actually makes the whole system easier. I don't need pistons anymore. You can tell just by the walls, it's now so much more direct. Finally, that part of the building looks like it belongs. I'm happy with that. Everything on the inside stayed the same. I just installed a new front porch and called it a day. And now I'm putting in lights, which tells you that the whole project's nearly done. I'm excited to see it. It's looked very weird with all these glowstone lights just floating in the air. You can see how much different the ground is now by how high up these old lights are. I have to jump, and I have jump boost done. Perfectly level. Well, not the inside. I start that tomorrow. I probably should also move that glass. Everything over here looks so much cleaner, and I feel like I have a lot more room for more builds. But like I said, now it's time to do the inner wall. This is gonna be some delicate work. Step one is I'm gonna rip up all the grass. See what's under there. I have no idea. Luckily, for the most part, the answer was more grass. Hey, looks like the giant totem's gonna shrink and then grow in the same video. Here I'm just trying to get everything down to grass before I move the lights down, and then I'll work on the buildings. That looks pretty weird, but also kinda nice at the same time. Why do I hear a villager over here? 
Don't tell me there's one in the floor. Hey, cleric, I thought you were dead. Well, now you are. It would have been a pain to relocate him. I've got enough on my plate already. I was getting the new lights down today when I noticed something. I did the math and the inner wall isn't a perfect square. It's off by a few blocks, which would make it a rectangle. You know, I had to rip down a lot of the wall anyway, but it's amazing I didn't notice. So now I'm laying out the square and I can get back to being perfect. The new wall's going up just fine, but my bad math has given me an even bigger problem. Every single light is now off and needs to be completely redone. And when I say need, I mean need. I will not survive if my lights are off. All lights on the compound have been eradicated. This is gonna be interesting. Ugh, this darkness goes against everything I've built these walls for. Luckily, I still have beacon powers. These monsters can't hurt me. It doesn't look right, but it also kind of looks nice, not gonna lie. Seeing my land all dark like that gave me a nice idea. So I'm not gonna be putting sea lanterns back in. It's a bit ambitious, but I'm gonna do redstone lights so I can turn them all on and off. I just really hope I don't regret this eventually. Uh... Hey, pillagers. Um, sup? That'll be one count of misdemeanor trespassing. Your sentence is death. No way I left the door open. This is bad. I'm gonna lose all my villagers. Oh, I got so lucky. The first wave was stuck in my inner inner wall. No one got hurt. Except the pillagers, of course. Now I gotta spend a day cleaning up the mess from yesterday. Uh, one thing I didn't realize about my warden head is every time I kill something, it's gonna get skulk all over the place. All right, back to business. I'm gonna put down some torches just for safety until I get this all wired up. It's gonna be a little bit. I've gotta move some stuff and I don't want a creeper blowing me up. So now I'm just taking my time digging out the trenches for all the redstone wire. I don't know if you ever watched my 100 Days in Creative video, but I learned my lesson there. If you don't take your time with this, you'll pay for it. All of the redstone for this lighting circuit's gonna go on these chiseled stone blocks. I had a bunch of them laying around for the old monster farm, and it's nice to be uniform. Little sad, but got rid of the old piston gate today. It was off by three blocks, I just couldn't save it. Everything is done except one light, right above the nether portal. Considering all that went into this project, I'd say that's pretty good, but I've still gotta fix it. There's really no way around it. I had to drop the whole ceiling, and that just made it all look funky. Just gives me more to do later, I guess. I don't remember why I killed all these dogs today. I just thought you might want to know. So before I can wire everything up, I've got to level out the innermost wall, and this is definitely the most delicate. I lucked out. Everything moved down one block real nice. Even redoing the first floor wasn't that bad. I was honestly surprised. I didn't even move anything on the walls. It just looks like my trinkets are higher. And now officially, the whole compound's on one level. Was it necessary? Not really. Was it notable? Oh yeah. Time for lights. There's gonna be one lever in the inner wall that'll turn all of them on and off. Wiring was easy, all the conduits are ready to code. And with four redstone to spare, it's all wired. Hello darkness, my old friend. Probably should have waited to test until this is all covered up. There's creepers in my redstone. Oh, it's all so unnaturally flat. I love it. Today I'm fixing little things, like that, and this, and those, and these. Fixing the five-year garden today, I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't done anything for all the other years. I'll do something big for ten. The nether hub ceiling is just far too low. I've gotta gut everything. I downgraded my double spiral staircase for a regular staircase, but at least I don't bonk my head. Just moving over the totems today, and had to end this one early, there was a skunk in my basement window. I had a guy come and get it. He said they were gonna go to a happy skunk place. I know for a fact that skunk is dead. Listen, trespassing gets you death around here. Just getting the wall design down today, you gotta be symmetrical. I needed more redstone, so I went down in the caves and used a night vision potion. It was kinda awesome. I feel like most of the time when I mine, I just leave the redstone there, so I got a bunch. I thought I wanted redstone lights in the wall, but... I'm gonna be honest, I don't really like how they look. So for now, I'm just doing sea lanterns. We'll see if that changes. New piston door is going up today, and unlike the old one, this will be wired efficiently. Oh yeah, kept that redstone tight. That thing's looking slick. These days, we're all about vanity. But you know, sometimes those are the best days. I liked my front gate so much, I'm gonna put the exact same one in the back. But oh no, the vault redstone's right underneath it. Oh, if redstone could electrocute you, I would definitely already be dead. I curse my past self. It's just a mess down here. It's gonna take some planning. After an entirely separate day, I finally got the back piston door all wired up. Never ever put redstone on grass. You'll regret it. Back gate's looking good, even though I guarantee I'll never really use that thing. I can fly. Speaking of other things I don't really use, I've got to reconnect my old birch road to the compound. I'm getting nearly done, so I rode the rail. It's a great way to see imperfections. See, I almost forgot about those two chunks I dug out, had to re-glass those holes. This was the most annoying part. I still have no idea how to make the egg farm look less ugly, but all its innards were broken, so at least I got those fixed today. I'm biting the bullet, I'm just gonna make it a big box. I can always change it later. Yeah, it fits in nicely with all the other big boxes on the industrial side. I almost forgot about my rocket farm. You know the one that's hidden behind the flags now? I think I have an idea. I got a nice little button hidden inside South Africa. You can barely even see it. It's all connected to a T flip-flop, so you just press the button to reveal or hide the secret entrance. Today I did some measuring, because you might not believe me, but I'm gonna make all this grass 
emeralds. I'd like to get it all done by 2900, but if I want to do that, I need to use every money-making method possible. I'm gonna use trades, raids, and something you've never seen before. Oh no, he's setting up a room on the industrial side with a cobblestone floor. This won't be good. My current villagers are very efficient. They all do their trades for one emerald for whatever item I trade them for. But I don't have that many, and I need a lot more emeralds than these guys can output. And when you need lots of money, nothing beats lots of villagers. That's what these rooms are for. Raids will only get me so far. I have so much iron that I can't even sell it all. But soon, I'll be able to. Thing is though, the worst part about villagers is when you get a lot of them, they get really, really laggy. So this room, the recycler, breeds them, exploits them, and takes care of them. Listen guys, it's a video game and I need to make my floor out of money. I'm gonna fill this thing with about, I don't know, 20, 30 toolsmiths, and they'll all buy my iron. I'm selling everything, even my coal. I'm okay, stop asking. Some of you may be wondering why I don't just build a raid farm, and it's because I like the combat. Now I'm finally starting to get the recycler up and running. I've got to level up these villagers so they'll actually buy my iron. It definitely feels like a waste. I'm used to perfect trades, but with the sheer number of them, the profit's gonna be insane. I can already feel the lag growing and it's gonna get so much worse. There's so many, I had to build a dedicated disposal system just for all the useless stone tools they throw at me. I was selling so much iron, the price started to go up even with max hero status, I gotta chill. So I figured I'd spend some of the money I've got. I can't do everything, but I can do a section. There is nothing more satisfying than placing pure emerald. One quadrant done and I already love it. Prices are still insane, so I'm gonna get half done. You know, this all used to be a forest. Speaking of money, it's time for some advertising. Prices should be back to normal tomorrow, so I got a level 6 raid in anticipation. Ah, the money was great, but you know, I got lots of melons, so I set up a second recycler. The progress seems kind of fast already because I've been saving emeralds for hundreds of days. But I'm telling you right now, if I didn't set up these buildings, I'd be doing this for 100 days. They don't even look too bad. Fit right in on the industrial side. Psst. Who wants iron? Come get it. Farmer recyclers now done. Give it about a week and I'll be trading. I've already spent so much time on this wall killing pillagers makes me want to put something artsy on it. Maybe a mosaic or hieroglyphic depicting how great I am. Luke the notable had a farm and it was very sad. And on that farm he had some children. What is up with that? Farmers are getting just about done. This time I even remembered to set up a disposal system for their useless presence. I got a lot of farmers now and when iron prices go back to normal I'm gonna get so much money. But first it's time to spend some more money. I need some motivation. I didn't even have enough for another full quadrant. It's a lot more emeralds than you think, but now I'm driven. I'm setting everything up. Tomorrow, I'm gonna see just how many emeralds I can make in a single day. 2,322 emeralds in a single day. No, I would not like to round up my total for charity. I care not for how many kids are starving. Just give me my change. I don't have enough to finish, but I placed more emeralds today. I was just excited. Profits were lower the next day because I spent too much time walking around the finished section. This is now all that's left. Tomorrow, I'll be done. Oh, it's beautiful. It truly, it truly is beautiful. All right, villagers, I don't need you anymore. Time to get recycled. I left two in each recycler just in case I ever need them again. I probably will. One day, everything will be emerald. It's a little surreal walking around the emerald lawn. It definitely does not feel natural. I rebuilt the diorite road today, pretty much to its old specifications, and then just looked at my land some more. I'm in love. Day 2868, I updated my maps. Obviously, there's a lot of things that have changed. Oh, I love it even more now. Rode the rail just to see if anything else needed a quick change. It gives me some perspective. I got rid of my dolphin cage, it's just ugly and sad. And after all that labor, I gotta get away. It's time to go camping. I flew away from home with nothing until I broke my elytra. I'll keep it as a souvenir. Well, I shouldn't say nothing. I did bring my axe. And tonight, I slept comfortably in this desert town. Camping can be a fun reset. Take myself away from the totems of undying and beacon powers and see what it's like to just play Minecraft. I was feeling the adventure and walked out into the desert without a plan. Of course, then night came. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. I felt much better once I got in a boat. It's one of the safest ways to travel even when you're naked. I'll sleep in this village. That still counts as camping. All I wanted today was just to get out of the desert and badlands. It's just not great camping material. Hey, look at that. I found a diamond in this abandoned village. On the edge of the desert, I found this really nice sparse jungle. I could live here. I'd set up camp on the top of this hill, but it is getting dark. So I found a nearby cave and figured this was a good time to get some iron and coal. Then I set up a little cottage. Nothing fancy, just some shelter. I gotta say, it was nice having jungle wood that gave me more to work with. No roof, but it's got a door. It's home. From the top of the hill, I could see some nearby acacia trees, and these will be perfect for a roof. I got all the roofing done by nightfall. I didn't take a look at it, just went straight inside. 
There's monsters out there. Well, obviously, I was rushed. I'll have to fix that. Oh, yeah, it turned out great. I love my cute little camping cottage. So much so, I worked until sunset, making it look pretty. That was a good day. Now I've got food. I've got shelter. I've even got armor. What more do you want? Conquest, I guess. I cleared out the cave underneath my land today. And from the top of the hill, I could also see this massive cave. Might as well go through here, too. It was a very large cave system. Went all the way down to Deep Slate. What I always find I like best about camping, though, is exploring. I found a really nice savanna town nearby. Those are easily my favorite. What's nice is I didn't have to use coordinates to get home. You can see my hill from here. Back in the big cave, just looking for diamonds. I really don't know why, but why does anyone do anything? Didn't find a single diamond in the whole cave. I missed night vision potions already. Then there was more caving and more nothing. I almost missed it, but I found one underneath some water here. Just one. What a ripoff. It's not like I haven't been trying. Look at this cave. It's explored. I'm not sure what drives me to do what I do, but now I want some enchanted armor. And for that, I need leather, which is cow skin. So in the basement of my cottage, I set up a very simple enchanting room. Then I enchanted everything I have with, I'll be honest, some really bad enchantments. I got a horse. Pretty good one, too. Too bad it can't come home with me. We had a lot of fun together, slaying everything we came across. Today, I set up a sugarcane farm, like I'm even gonna be here for a few more days. I got a little compound set up. What's stopping me from starting fresh here? Nah, I really like being immortal. But... This has been very fun. All right, I've got steak, golden apples, enchanted armor. I'm going back in the cave. I want some diamonds. I found a really small mine shaft at deep slate level, but no diamonds. Still though, this is all the stuff I've found while camping the last few days. I think I did pretty well. And after one more unsuccessful day in the caves, I thought it was a good time to go back home. Ah, would you look at that? My last sunset got stolen by the rain. I had a lot of fun living out here, building the cottage. It's not like it's going anywhere. I could always build a portal to it. But now it's time to go home. I've got huge plans and not too much time left. I'm about 20,000 blocks away from home, which sounds like a lot, but if you go in a straight line, it's really not that bad. A lot of my journey was over the ocean, which is always easy travel. I got a little loot here and there, nothing too notable. But by the night time of day 2890, I was back to my birch road, which means I'm home. I made a relic out of my broken elytra because I hardly found any diamonds while camping. It felt good to be home and put my armor back on. That's the whole point of camping. But then I got straight back to work. It's time for a huge project. If you remember at the end of 2000 days, I failed to get How Did We Get Here? The hardest achievement in the game. And on this little island, hopefully, I'll be doing it again. How Did We Get Here involves having every single effect in the game applied at the same time. And I've left myself over 100 days to complete it. And I'll definitely need all that time. It took me three days just to set up the location. Now that I've got the location, the next step is to dig a canal all the way from my main base there. About 8,000 blocks. I need to get a shulker out of the end and into the overworld and then transport it all this way. I'll mostly just use existing rivers and oceans to get one path of water all the way to my new How Did We Get Here island. I then just write down all the directions on a piece of paper so I don't get lost. Took a little break from canal construction to give my two-year-old a tour. She loves my animals. She really likes my horses. I even asked her to name my prized horse. It doesn't have one. She named him Blue. Thanks. Now I'll be super sad when he dies. The canal's dug and I've got the directions, I just need water. And now that's all done. Step one of like a thousand. Day 2901, I made How Did We Get Here Island 2 slightly bigger. I also looked at my warden trapping infrastructure to see how easy a diversion would be. Then I went to my base warden and checked the numbers on just how far away I can be safely. Back at the island, digging out where the warden will go, hopefully this doesn't get me murdered. Of course I'll have safety features, that's what I set up today. And now I'm just digging a new warden tunnel to get a warden to How Did We Get Here Island. In theory, I could put a warden anywhere. More digging! I love it so much! <laughs> We've already been over how this goes. I'm gonna have the warden chase me a few thousand blocks to How Did We Get Here Island. Then it's just a very simple trap using this bubble elevator to get it right where I want it. There we go. Got the warden. I hope you didn't doubt me. I did the warden first because it's obviously the most dangerous. I need to build everything around the warden. I dug a trench, which allows me to get darkness without the warden shooting me. But being on that island without a beacon is making me very nervous. The warden can kill me in two shots. However, thanks to my wither skeleton farm in two days, I got enough heads for a sextuple beacon. Killed the weather six times, set up the beacon, and now I feel so much safer. The room is now marked. In here I'll get darkness, but the warden can't shoot me. And he shot me several times, figuring that out. Somehow, I'm way more worried about the dolphin. They have a habit of dying. I think I should have made the cage before getting the dolphin over here. Him and the warden did not agree. I swear, I did not do that on porpoise. Cage one is looking fine. At least the dolphin is not being gunned down. A dead dolphin stopped me in 2,000 days from getting how did we get here, so I gotta make sure this works. I was decently kind 
confident the dolphin would be fine, so now I'm in the end trying to get a shulker. It's likely my least favorite part of the achievement. It's just such a struggle. Took three days just to get one back to my main camp, and now I have to transport him thousands of blocks. Well, wish me luck. Everything was going fine until I got to a section where I apparently didn't fill with water all the way. The shulker is now lost somewhere in the ground, and this could all have been avoided. I was up all night searching, but I found him. Got to the island. What could go wrong? Got the shulker in just fine, but my conduit killed him. Oh, got another, let's go. I didn't even get out of camp and this one died. Ah! All right, three times for 3,000 days, that just makes sense. And for once, something nice happened to me. If a shulker shoots itself, there's a chance it reproduces, so now I've got two on the island. Nice, I hate that part. And now it's done. And I got two! Dolphin's now dead. I figured that would happen. Time for some experiments. Sometimes they drown themselves on the bottom. With this design, he can't be on the bottom. I guess that kind of looks like happiness. At least he's not dead. 2929, I brewed all the various potions for how did we get here. I also set up a portal right near my pillager outpost to make sure Bad Omen won't be hard to get. Went back to the island to check everything, and now the dolphin's dead. I have no idea what happened, but I'll figure that out in time. Today I converted the structure from dirt to deep slate. This dolphin cage has soul sand in the corners and a glass top. So far, it seems to work. I just watched it all day to make sure it lived. And it did, but I really, really wanted to be sure, so I gave it an extra day. Still, no dolphin death. Now that the island's all set up, I set out for more achievements. Apparently, I have two more biomes to find. The only issue is I'm not sure which ones they are. I flew around for three days, found a lot of beautiful landscapes, but none gave me the achievement. While exploring, I found a pillager outpost. This one with a laze. It's a new mob that I didn't think I'd find, but it's like 20,000 blocks away, so getting them home will be a challenge. So first step, I gotta go back home, and I flew up so high that my body turned black. You you can save a lot of rockets this way. I was home by the end of the night. I'm coming to Lay's, hold on! It was a lot of digging, even for a two block tall tunnel. Then I hit some basalt and that just slowed me down more. Got all the way there, and then realized I have no obsidian to make a portal. I really gotta put some obsidian in my ender purse. All right, now after wasting all that time, I'm back where I tied up the Lay's. Getting them back home was slow, but they follow me. Now that I have them here, I'm not really sure what to do with them, though I will say it's kinda nice seeing them float around. I am afraid they'll run away, but I don't wanna tie them up. They seem like such free creatures, so I made them a room in the house. I got three of them up here chilling now. That's enough to look at and breed. I finalized the room with an LA themed carpet. There's also an achievement that goes with them and I got that here. I'm out looking for bees day 2950. Why? Mind your own beesness. Turns out I didn't need bees at all. I already had honeycomb for wax on, wax off. However, the compound has been bee-less, so I put them in the barn. In my mind, they're now wasps. I also got the glow sign achievement that was so hard. I really like this achievement where you have to fall from the top of the map to the bottom of the map. Just kind of sad I didn't build something more interesting. Now I'm fighting the Ender Dragon. What a crazy couple of days. I had to look at it with a telescope. Pretty simple, if you're me. Back to exploring. No new biomes, but I did find a god apple today. I had to find a meadow for the Sound of Music achievement. They're a lot harder to find than you might think. During my journey, I found a swamp. And here, I'm gonna try to breed some frogs. Here's the thing. I barely knew how frogs worked. There was no point in me breeding them here. I should have just went home. To get different frogs, you have to be in different biomes. So I set up these weird builds to try to make that happen. But all 20,000 thousand blocks away. There's just no point to this. All the notes say for this day, in all caps, is I hate breeding frogs. I HATE BREEDING FROGS! The worst part is I'm doing it wrong, and I don't even know. I was fairly certain this should have made a green frog, but it just made tadpoles. After waiting another day, I did get the green frog, and as you can see, I was very happy. To complete my collection, I just needed this one tadpole to turn into a white frog. However, he was orange. I hope he enjoyed his short life. Finally, I came to my senses and flew back home. It was 50,000 blocks, not 20,000. Can someone explain to me why my body turns black when I fly up this high, it makes me nervous. Now I'm back near home, I'm gonna breed frogs the right way. While I waited for the tadpole to change into a green frog, I mined up some blue ice. Blue ice, green frog, purple pickaxe, gray man, I'm teaching everyone colors today. And because fate loves me, on day 2969, I got my green frog. Took him home on my old canal that I built in the first hundred days. This thing's been so useful. I wasted no time. That night went to a nearby savanna and started on a white frog. Oh, look at him, my baby! The whole reason I'm doing this is to get frog lights. And believe it or not, that involves the nether. So now I'm in the nether, constructing my very own custom frog light farm. Just know I did not consult Google for this, so please make fun of me, nerds. Today I made a tunnel to the frog light farm through way too much lava. Kind of like saying that. 
Frog Life Farm. Going to the Frog Life Farm. It's simply just a big open platform in the basalt over a lava lake where magma cubes are likely to spawn. Gonna test it with the orange ones. I've got a bunch living in my creeper farm. Someone must have a concussion over at Minecraft because to get a frog light, you have to have a frog eat a baby magma cube. The farm works great, but we can't all deny that it's a little strange. I guess I kind of thought the frogs would be in some sort of danger in the nether, but really they're not. They love eating these things like it's their job. And there they are, all three frog lights. It's an achievement. It'll also be an achievement getting my allays back home. They followed me in here. It just took a lot of yanking and shoving, like a trip to the grocery store with mom. So after all that, I took a look at all my remaining achievements, and none of them gave me a feeling of joy. I'll get them in 4,000 days. My last month in this world, I'm gonna do fun stuff. I want you all to know that I've had this idea for a very long time. I'm gonna renovate my zombie spawner. I never use it. Never. But when I'm done with all this, I will. One of the things I installed was a more sophisticated off switch. Now with the flick of a lever, I can turn it all off. It's no longer a zombie spawner anymore. It's a shooting range. I don't need any rotten flesh or the meager amount of XP that these zombies provide, but I would like a little entertainment. The buildings were also just terrible. What was I thinking? Really shouldn't be out this far in the rain, but I've got beacon powers, I'll be fine. I've wanted to get rid of that ugliness for a long time, and now it's done. 2980, I'm debating frog lights on the wall. I'm not sure if I want to do it. They are nice and green, but even with that, I don't know if they go with the wall. And I wasn't even sure how many frog lights I could get, so I tested that today. I was incredibly surprised at how good my farm was. Those frogs are machines. In one day? One day, I got almost 200 frog lights. That was surprising because my design is very simple. Just imagine if I made something more complex. One more day and I should be done. I'll be able to put these frog lights wherever I want. I did kind of punch my green frog today. I felt so bad. I decided against the frog lights inside of the wall. I know they're green. I just didn't think the aesthetics matched. However, I think on the ground, that could look pretty nice. Ooh, yeah, it turned out to be a great frame for the wall. I wasn't planning on the frog lights looking so great, so now the sea lanterns are going too. Now I can get my inner wall much darker. Me from the first 100 days would not like this at all. I just kind of miss my old monster farm sometimes, so I made my whole area a monster farm. Now I'm doing some work on a build I'll call the guest house. About a week after this video comes out, I'll release a world tour so everyone can see a much more in-depth look at everything I built in 3,000 days. In that video, I'll give a world download link, and when you step foot on my land, this is where you better sleep. I slept there tonight to test it. It's cozy, but needs something. I'm gonna put the bed in the floor, which is easier said than done since I've wired up my entire compound to have lights. I'm just glad I built the whole lighting circuit to code in a fairly neat manner, otherwise this would have been impossible. I'm not even gonna show all the struggle I had to go to to make this a reality, but it works. There's a bed in the floor. If you download the world, you better sleep here. Appreciate all my frustration. It felt, uh, I don't know, coffin-like? All right, finishing touches now. Nothing involving redstone, thank me. You know, sometimes it's fun to build pointless stuff. That's all I've been doing the last few days, and I swear if one of you sleeps in my bed, I will know this is my private sanctum. I will now be erecting a giant statue of myself. Again, really shouldn't be that hard. My skin's mostly gray except the face. Got the face done today and I already love it. I don't know how I always do this though. I'm gonna run out of concrete and I can't leave it like that. It looks a little sus. I did say I was erecting a statue, didn't I? I've got the gravel, I just need sand. Done. I always thought this side of the compound was missing something and I fit in just perfectly. I'd never get rid of the old statue of myself. That thing's historic. I really like how you can see the new statue from the old statue. I'd like to be able to go inside of myself but I want the entrance to be secret. But of course, with all my underground lighting, this was not gonna be an easy task. Uh, oh man, I don't know what happened, but now half the lights are off. Luckily, using my elytra, I could jam myself in there and see what the problem was. All right, now the lights work again. Let's see if I can get this secret door done. In theory, the redstone should not be that difficult. I've done tons of stuff like this before, but I don't know why this piston, not connected to anything, is turned on. So I just gave up on the secret door. Maybe I'll revisit that when my redstone isn't cursed. 2995, I put some finishing touches on the wall, just a little flare on the corners. It just breaks up the square a little bit and makes it look a little more refined. I don't have many more days. I wanted to make everything look as perfect as I could. Okay, the time is now. Final preparations for how did we get here. I brewed an entirely separate set of potions, double checked everything. I wanted that achievement. Went over to the island. I was most worried about the dolphin dying but he seems fine. Then I went back home and took one last look around the compound to make sure everything looked and worked perfectly. Tomorrow, the gauntlet begins. I slept in my sky bedroom to increase my power. The first step of how did we get here is to do a raid so you're the hero of the village. That was easy. I am me. Now, while I'm a hero, I have to go get bad omen, and this just means I can't go home again or I'll start a raid. I traveled through the nether running to get my hunger down. Of course, the night before day 3000, I made probably my 3000th check to make sure I had everything for this achievement. But there it is, the sunrise of day 
pay 3,000. All right, I should have enough stuff to do this twice, so if I mess this up, I can try again. Everything was looking good. I went into the pocket with my suspicious stew and didn't get the achievement. All right, well, I guess that's why I brought more items than I needed. All right, this time for sure, I looked at my list. Nothing should be wrong and no achievement. How could I forget mining fatigue? My hope was not gone. There's still some time in day 3,000. I just gotta beat this raid as fast as possible. Slayed those pillagers, brewed some potions. My heart was racing. But by the time I got everything together, the sun was already up. It's now day 3001. I really hate myself for messing that up, but I won't be defeated again. I'm getting this achievement. How could I forget mining fatigue? It's the whole reason I'm on an island to begin with. I built a platform. How? You know what? It's just a really hard achievement. On my third attempt, even with mining fatigue, I didn't get it. That time, my issue was the shulker not hitting me. But on my fourth attempt, I finally, finally got it. Yeah, it was sloppy. Yeah, I went to day 3001, but you know what? I was still proud. You guys kinda all got an extra day. It's not the worst thing in the world. After 3000 days, I'm still alive and ready to watch that next sunset. I'm hoping to have 4000 days out in about a year. I know that's a long time to wait, but these are long videos and I know the wait will be worth it. Take some time right now to subscribe so you don't miss it. I've got a lot of content coming in the meantime too. Thank you so much to everyone who has supported me and watched me over the years. You are truly the reason that I do this. If it wasn't for you, these videos wouldn't exist. So thank you, stay notable, and I'll see you in the next video.